Yada da. What the fuck weekly, baby? We are in the building, baby. Let's let the motherfucking notifications go out. Let's let the people get in the building, man. We're about to do a review on a dope ass doc that came out on my homeboy. Rest in peace, the pretty black man. We're raging mob shit, man. I'm glad that people finally showing respect, giving my brother his flowers. And we're going to just watch the documentary and talk our shit, you know what I mean, and review it, man, period. I want y'all to see it, man, know how important Pretty Black was to, to the Bay Area, you know what I mean, rap scene, along with the regime, you know, along with uh, the dope game, along with Mac Dre, along with the Burner, along with the Jacka. Like, that that boy put us all on, you know what I mean, period. So we're going to do this little review, and I'm going to add a, a little bit of my doc, uh, my commentate, my commentary to it. You know, to um, be my side of who, you know, Pretty Black was to me. You know what I mean? Straight up. So we're going to let the mob, let everybody get in the building. You know what I mean? Let them know the vacations go out. You know what I mean? Let me see who up in the building. Let's do the tap in real quick. You feel me? The first one to tap in was my man, man. Mm-hmm. Aunt G. Davis in the building, man. Hey, okay, man. Salute to the Bucks. Okay, good shit. The Bucks did they motherfucking thing, Jermaine. You know what I mean? We ain't mad at that, man. Unseen TV in this motherfucker. I see you, baby. You know what I mean? No Frank Ocean. No. DB Stokeland in this motherfucker. Let's see where everybody tapping in from right quick. You feel me? Man, long live pretty black, man. Ali Frazier. Put that up, man. And free the Gub, man. Gub coming home. Yeah, Gub coming home, nigga. I just talked to Gio. I'm about to post his new single, too, man, tomorrow. I had to let my uncle Mike get his uh get his vibe going. You know what I mean? Let that just clear the whole post out for Uncle Mike. I ain't posting shit, man. Rest in peace to my Uncle Mike. Period. Sacramento, rest in peace to Pretty Black, man. Pretty Black was a legend in Northern Cali, man. Legend in Chicago. Yeah, man. We're gonna talk about my brother, bro. period. Tonight, down in Mike, Minneapolis in this motherfucker. I see you. I see your boy, Charlotte in the building. I see your boy. Let me slow down on these hard shots. You know what I mean? Because it's going to have me emotional. Get some uh, brewski in my life. <laughs> yeah, this this, this uh, emotional documentary, man. When I, when I see this documentary, I miss my brother like a motherfucker, man. It's hard to hold back tears and shit. So, you know. MOB for life, man. Definitely money over everything, man. Talk your shit, man. Ollie Frazier, man. You know what to do. South uh South Seattle, that nigga. <laughs> hey, I ain't laughing at that nigga South uh, Seattle in the building, but how you spelled it, my nigga, is funny. You spell like soul, but South. Good shit, my nigga. Said which documentary? We about to we about to play it tonight. It ain't no, it's a, it's a YouTube doc. It's like a 30-minute doc. You know what I mean? Oklahoma in the building. Y'all know what I mean? We're going to be talking to my nigga from Oklahoma too tonight, man. You know what I mean? A couple of niggas I know pretty black to tap in. Anybody, you know what I mean, that's in the motherfucking chat that really tapped in with pretty black while he was in the Bay, Chicago, you know, Atlanta, you know what I mean? Vegas, LA, you know what I mean? Y'all tap in. I'm going to throw the black bat line out, but it's a whole regime mob night tonight, man. And a MOE night, nigga. Money over everything, man. We're gonna do a big for pretty black, man. Straight up, man. Doc said pretty black got his back door. Okay, 5150 goon. Okay, 5150 in the building. Um, yeah, we're gonna watch the doc and let, let the doc tell the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all still hurt hurt, Frazier. We all still hurt, man. You know, just like when the jacket, you know what I mean? The same shit. Like, we all still hurt from all that, bro. Period, man. We just dealing with it, you know what I mean? And we keeping it mild. But I'm glad that this documentary gave a history lesson on my brother, you know what I mean? So, Ebony, what's happening? We in this motherfucker, man. Ohio in this bitch, man. Hey, my nigga motherfucking uh, Scott Peas in this bitch. Regime mob. It's all regime life motherfucking the episode tonight yeah everybody hit them likes on the way in you feel me straight up man we gonna talk some shit tonight man on some real on a real boss player man 
Pretty Black was a fucking boss. Talking about boss, 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 boss player. When he first got in the regime, the nigga said, man, I'm going to be the Jew Santana of the regime. <laughs> and sure enough, he was him. Nigga. That nigga got the biggest chains, everything. <laughs> Salute to my nigga Pretty Black, man. Straight up, man. <laughs> he said, I'm the... He said, man, you can't. I'm Jewels, nigga. Watch this, nigga. The blah, 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 big ass chains, nigga. Big ass, nigga. The biggest motherfucking luxury cars you can have, nigga. Mini mansions, nigga. Black, yeah. Black was that young nigga, man. Nigga said, my rims is older than me, nigga. Nigga was like, what, 23, 24, nigga. Sitting on 30s on the Hummer, nigga. Pretty black, nigga. Had to bought the lamb off the flow, straight cash. Um, slide through the Ville, slide through Oakland and the Lamb, nigga. That's some brave shit. You don't even see NFL players or NBA players slide through Oakland and a Lamborghini. The last motherfucker to really slide through Oakland and some fly shit was J.R. Ryder. J.R. Ryder was sliding that motherfucking Rolls Royce through the motherfucking town, pulling up, shooting dice with niggas, all types of shit. But that's the only, <laughs> that was the last time. Oh, recently you see Filthy Rich, of course, but I'm talking about back in the day. The only nigga that rode a Lambo through the town back in the day at that time when all the D-boys was locked up in jail doing 30 years, nigga, was pretty black. Period. Sliding that shit, man, and letting, letting nigga hood niggas from Oakland, nigga, drive the motherfucking Escalade, drive the S550 Benz, nigga. Nigga, and a convoy, he and the motherfucking Lambo, they in the Benz, they in the motherfucking... Oh, and let's not forget the Hummer. So they got the Hummer, the motherfucking Escalade, and the 550 right behind them. Oh, and the BMW. Man, come on, man. Convoy, nigga. Black one playing out here, man. Chicago nigga came to the Bay and, and made it his way, nigga. Made his way, nigga. Straight up. I, he came to the Bay in a Range Rover, nigga. I met Pretty Black when, in a Range Rover, nigga, when he was versatile, nigga. Versatile. Had a Range Rover, nigga. Big jewels on. Not the big heavy shit, but had jewels on. And a Range Rover, nigga. He came to the town in a Range Rover. He was not no bum, nigga. Period. Straight up, man. So we're going to salute Pretty Black tonight, Dynamite. You hear me? Shanique went in the building, man. The My Squad. I see all my mods in the building, man. You know, Happy New Year to everybody, man. Straight up, man. New Year, new blessings, new big shit, man. Let me change the brand, too, because this is not Wonder Twin. But the twins will activate on this motherfucker too, though. Definitely, man. Shout out Goose the Great. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Let's get into this shit, though. Let me um premiere this shit, man. This is a dope little doc. I'm going to tap in, in and out. You know what I mean? No Frank Ocean. No, yeah. I don't like the title. The title says, A Chicago Pimp Rapper Gets Killed in Oakland. Pretty Black. I don't like the title. A Chicago pimp rapper? Uh, come on, bro. That one, it. He was not no fucking pimp rapper, my nigga. Mob rapper, nigga. Mob business, nigga. I ain't never, whatever he was doing, I ain't never seen what he did behind closed doors. So whatever he did, he probably was pimping. I ain't know. I seen this nigga in the studio. We was making plays, nigga. Verse licks, nigga. Uh, uh, fucking shows, nigga. Albums, compilations, hella shit, nigga, busting bread down on the industry side of the game. So let's go, man. Um, fair use. Uh, let me bring this back, man. How you shrink it? Fuck it. Fair use, man. Let's go. Yo, hey, what's it called? 
Sticky Situation TV, man. You got to shout them out. That intro was dope. Sticky Situation TV. Boy, it say the regime, casted by the regime, music by Pretty Black. Nigga, look at this, boy. Hey, Sticky Situation, I fuck with y'all the long way, man. Fair use. Let's go, y'all. Great presentation. Great intro. Rest in peace, Pretty Black. Regime Mob. Let's go. What up, YouTube family? Today, I wanted to make a video about a rapper who never gets talked about that deserves his flowers. A rapper who don't have anyone speaking his story that I feel needs to be remembered and never forgotten. This rapper's artist name was Pretty Black from Chicago, Illinois, but made his mark in Northern California. He was doing his thing in 2005 to 2008 until he met his untimely demise. He had a short but strong run, but in that short run, he did a lot in the independent rap game and even made a lot of money in the streets at the same time. His murder is a cold case to this day and it's still a big mystery behind it. Not even his own people know what happened. There is a lot of unanswered questions about this rapper, a rapper who lived his raps and had that authenticity in his music. Since gangsta music started in the 1980s in California, fans have been in question on what rappers really live in their raps as being a real gangster they portray to be, or are they just straight studio gangsters that never had no real connection in the streets? Rappers like Tupac that people claim wasn't really with the business when it came to the streets. Always been a debate whether if it was just all for show or was he really living like that? Can a man who practice ballet dancing have a double life in the streets? Or even Ice Cube, he came from a good family and never had no street background, but just rapped about what he's seen. But don't get it twisted, rappers have a fair share share of being about what they rap from rappers that have gang ties from an early age to rappers who have taken lives in the street we've seen it all pretty black was anything but a faker he lived, lived his raps and played his part in the streets with even being blessed with ism by real street hustlers like gangsta brown but when living the double life as halfway in the streets and halfway in the studio it can end horribly just like these stories we continue to hear about till this day. Pretty Black's real name was Ayula Matthew Oromuiwa, was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1983, raised by his Nigerian family. Black is, Ni Black is, is, is Nigerian for real. You know, his mom is, you know, like, you know, he really Nigerian for real. <laughs> yeah, you know, by the way, I'm the world record holder. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so, where you from? Nigerian. Nigerian. I'm from Nigeria. From Lagos, 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 Nigeria. Lagos, Nigeria. 20. The first African American. No, it's tonight. It's up here in the ghetto. No, the you first is me. My nigga. Canada. Pretty black grew up on the south and north side of the city in Chicago. As a kid, he played basketball and had hoop dreams before all the rapping since he was tall, standing at 6'4", 200 pounds at age 16. He wanted to follow in the steps of his older brother, Big Mike, that played basketball at a big college and then went on to play in the NFL for the Dallas Cowboys. And he got an older brother. Big Mike is a pretty black big brother. And he was, uh, you know, supporting him, rapping and all that shit came out here mike was really the the glue behind a lot of that mike was uh used to play for the cowboys i don't know i'm not sure how long mike played for the cowboys but mike played professional football and then after that he was a successful businessman and um he was supporting his little brother so pretty black's hoop dreams were cut short when pretty black and his friend were at a house party in the chicago's north side shots rang out and he was hit by bullets in the leg but luckily survived that incident he stopped playing ball due to his injuries and then started rapping he moved to california at age 18 to live with his older brother in hopes of starting a new life and getting away from chicago his older brother had his own business selling alarm systems and pretty black would move all around the cities around the bay area selling alarm systems which he made money from he began taking his rapping serious when he dropped his first independent single called 
would it do future? It's a couple parts that's kind of shaky. You know what I mean? Like this part right here. He said his, his brother was selling alarm systems. <clears throat> Let me rephrase that. Big Mike, big real estate investor. A lot of property, landlord, all across the Bay Area. A lot of properties. So Big Mike, real estate investor. Huge real estate investor. I don't know where this selling radio shit came from, but Let's continue with the story. That's what I know Big Mike, uh, Pretty Black's brother, being a real estate investor. I never heard about no radio shit, but this is new. But uh, let's continue. Fair use. Let's go. Doing little flip. Before being called Pretty Black, he went by the rap name Versatile. In 2004, he was messing with BA from Three Times Crazy. With the rap music, they dropped the song together. And in December 2004, Raw Records dropped a group album called Dub Game. Featuring Kick the Sneak and B.A. from Three Times Crazy, Hustler and Jack from Mop Figures, and Pretty Black, which he was still going by the rap name Versatile. That album was a major success, especially in Northern California. They had a track from the album on the radio called Town Business. That was really big. And uh, this was actually one of my better stories about the uh, He popped up with his Range Rover, and we mobbed with B.A. from Three Times Crazy. And he had the baby Benz, and he's like, we're going to mob to Vegas. So we back to back, you know, B.A. smashing Benz and black in the, uh, in the, in the range. And uh, he, had, he had, you know what I'm saying, he was about to sit one, sit one down out there. He was about to sit this chick down. And, you know, at the time, I had a Metro PCS, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that shit didn't work outside of Oakland. So we mobbing in the range. So I had my bra phone at the time, had my chick phone. And uh, I remember also the main point of the, this story is that yeah, this is like the first time I'm hearing the dope game, the dope game sound. And he's like, yeah, I got this song uh, with, with, the, with, uh, with, the, with the mob figures and, 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 and the three times. And I'm like, what? And it's, uh, he played a song called, I can't remember the name of the song, but I remember like that. Niggas, hustlers, everybody want to be like us. From the O to the shot, niggas, that shit was clapping, right? But right behind that song, we go, we go to Vegas. This true story. Nigga, the town business come on. Like, I'm like one of the first, like, like, no cap, like, I'm, like, one of the first 25 niggas in Oakland to ever hear the song. Like, it was fresh off the sh Black hella excited about this song that he got, which was slapping. But then town business behind it, like, that AK's Tech Nines, Mac 11. AK's Tech Nines, Mac 11's, 40 cash. Got me if you could drop in it. Funk all day and night with it. Like, nigga, I'm, I'm, my mind is blown going to Vegas, nigga. Like, this, we slapping this for eight hours. This shit is fresh off the press, like, oh my God. So he like, what, we gotta keep playing my song. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, the damn business is behind this, nigga, you tripping. So we, we kept mobbing. Man, that's a funny story. I could picture Pretty Black going to Vegas with his partners, all trying to listen to his music. Shut your bitch ass up before I get to talking shit about you. I'm fucking with you. Hey, great documentary, my nigga. Great doc, man. Um, You know, we gotta do some in-between uh, uh, commentary within the shit, you know what I mean? I'm gonna throw the motherfucking bat line out too, because this is a 30 minute documentary. I want a couple people that know, you know what I mean, that's from from the Bay Area, that know Pretty Black to tap in, you know what I mean? That know the jacket, that know the mob figures to really tap in, you know what I mean? I threw the bat line out though, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, this shit is getting deep, man. Definitely dope as fuck, man. Rest in peace of Pretty Black, man. Um. That shit that they were selling. <laughs> oh, man, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, y'all. Let me, let me put the shit back on. Let's go. They can show off his music. And right when his partner heard that town business come on, he just wouldn't stop playing it. I could just picture that. Because I remember when being with the homies and right when that song would come on, man, all of us would just be going so dumb, man. Like, I remember just being so hyphy off that and just just go crazy man all of us was going dumb to that for sure that was for sure the song of the year no matter if you were from frisco oakland sacramento northern cali was knocking that album and that song was a big hit okay back to the video rod records then dropped dope game 2 in 2005 and pretty black solo album prince of the streets and at the time he was going by Pretty Black, he dropped the verse style name and wanted something that was more bayish since he was in the city of Oakland, California, the land of the true ism where pimping was started. 
he was definitely influenced by the P culture in the Bay Area and got laced up with some real ism. So he changed his rap name to Pretty Black to adapt to his environment. The legendary pimp Gangsta Brown is who laced Pretty Black up and gave him his ism. Black was a real student to the game and really was getting it out of a female and jumped in the pimp game while being a rapper in the Bay Area. When he met me initially, he was versed out. He still had a lot of that East Coast kind of Chicago, you know what I'm saying, drip on him. But being out here long enough, he seen we was mobbing. You know, Chicago got a gang thing going on, and they got like a, a different kind of vibe out here. It's a mob thing, you know. It's money over here, you know what I'm saying? It's my other brother, you know what I'm saying? We worried about money. We ain't too much tripping on no beefing. So he kind of figured out, like, all oh, these peas out here you know we trying to get it out of bitch if, if, if nothing else you know what i'm saying so he figured out like okay like these kind of these players out here so the pretty black name uh, fits fits more of that mindset so when he was like okay you know we start pipping so you know when black you know what i'm saying got a, got a, uh used to the culture he started pipping you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he's up on the uh, Gangsta Brown and shit. You know what I'm saying? And Gangsta Brown was giving him good game. And, uh, you know, we had a little run, man. We really was, um, you know, around. from Oakland to Vegas and shit. You know, we was out there getting it. So the pretty black name came with a transition of me feeling like that's when black got his ism. You know what I'm saying? When he started feeling like, okay, I got this shit now and, and started trying to get it out of the that's where Pretty Black come from. And then that's also around the time when, you know what I'm saying, Yuck reached for him and uh, made him a part of the regime. But uh, B.A. from Three Times Crazy was the one who introduced us to all the rappers for real. He the one that made the relationships with Jacka and all of that. Pretty Black was really connected. He was... Hey, say that again, man. Niggas don't give my nigga B.A. his credit, man. B.A. from three times crazy, man. Niggas don't give him his credit, man. It wouldn't be no dope game if it wasn't for B.A. You know what I mean? Pretty black, definitely. That's my nigga. But raw records and all that shit, B hooked that up. B hooked it up for it to be half three times, half nigga, uh, uh, my figures, and pretty black. B.A., nigga. Salute to Bart, nigga. Three times crazy. I just had to let that be known, man, because niggas be trying to shit on my nigga. And he a real movement shaker that's been making a lot of shit go down, nigga, period, man. So salute to B.A. And I'm glad my nigga said that, period, straight up. Let's get back to the content. Fair use, fair use. Man, let me get out the screen, y'all. Let's go. B.A., man, three times crazy, man. Salute, let's go. Opening up for rappers like Gucci Mane. There's a story about when Gucci Mane was coming up, he came to the Bay Area to do a show and tapped in with Black. And wanted to wear Black's Mighty Mouse chain. So Black let him wear the chain for the show. And after the show, Gucci Man wasn't trying to give it back. But none of that was about to happen to Black in the Bay. And he ended up getting his chain back. Not sure what Gucci Man's intentions were that night. Whether if he was trying to keep the chain or not. Or if it was just a misunderstanding. Either way, Black ended up getting his chain back. And that was that. In 2006, Pretty Black... False! Flag on the field. That whole story is fucking false. What he talking about? Flag on the field. False play. Now he got some. Uh, uh, it's some truth to it. It's definitely a jury exchange to where Gucci left with some jury. But that chain, that Mighty Mouse chain, was Gucci Man's chain. Pretty Black had a watch on from a prominent rapper from Chicago. I ain't gonna say his name. I'm gonna let this rapper say. But he had on a motherfucking white and blue diamond, um, uh, a Jacob. At that time, Gucci had switched his shit to white and blue diamonds. You know what I mean? Pretty Black had the motherfucking watch on. He wanted to wear the watch. He said, Pretty Black, you can wear the Mighty Mouse chain. So in the morning, Gucci man took off with the watch and Pretty Black ended up just having the chain. So you got the watch, I got the chain. And that's how Pretty Black had the Mighty Mouse chain. From Gucci Man. Gucci Man made the characters. Gucci Man had the Bar Simmons. He had the motherfucking Mighty Mouse. Gucci Man was one of the first rappers making like fucking cartoon character chains. So that was his chain, the Mighty Mouse chain. And um, he took a motherfucking uh, a Jacob watch from uh, Pretty Black. That's that what that's what it was. You know what I mean? And the prominent rapper, 
took the chain back to Gucci man and got his watch back. You know what I mean? So that's how that happened. But a uh, little bit of truth to it, but kind of false. But let's continue. Let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. But um, Black was tapped in. Hold on. One more thing. Black was tapped in with Gucci man. Gucci man came out there to do a show for Pretty Black. Pretty Black booked that show. That was his whole concert. He booked Gucci man. You know what I mean? Tapped in with Gucci man. End up fucking with uh. Aunt Debbie, niggas, Waka Flocka was out there in Atlanta rocking with them the long way. Period. Aunt Debbie, if she, if she could get on this motherfucker, she she said, nigga, Pretty Black is her other nephew. They love Pretty Black out there in Atlanta. Gucci man, they they fuck with them the long way. So um, they had a great relationship. Period. Let's continue. Black was featured on Jacka's album, Jack of All Trades, and was even featured on the album's hit single called This Is For, featuring Yuckmouth, and that was a big song in Northern Cali also. The music video was on YouTube before a lot of rappers have any of their music videos on YouTube at the time. Around this time, Yuckmouth put Pretty Black in the rap group, The Regime, which was also a big move for Black. Yuckmouth was on top of the, his game at the time. I mean, Pretty Black was really doing his thing at this time. He even had his own mini mansion in the Bay, which is really expensive, especially in the Bay Area. And easily had over a million in cars. He was driving a Range Rover, Benzes, Hummers on 30s to Lambos. This man really had a Lamborghini. There wasn't too many rappers driving Lambos at the time, especially in the Bay. Go, 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 hey, go, this is my nigga Pretty Black, man. This is so motherfucking cool. Alright, now nah, we fuck with right right MOE, money over everything. Young nigga, give me money. That's European West. Hey, what's up, Hey, this is my brother from another mother right here, man. He in that terminal thing, man. I'm getting on his new album. He getting on my album. I'm picking up here. Hey, you good? Hey, you, hey, you with this nigga, you got a lifetime pass, man. Yeah, my CEO cars right here, man. We call this the uh the spaceship right here, man. You know, this uh we going matter of fact. Hold on, man. Let me tell y'all niggas something. Where that nigga pulled that Lambo to is pure activity, nigga. That nigga pulled that shit to the hoagie shop. The hoagie shop. On seminary, nigga. That motherfucker is pure activity, nigga. You could get shot, robbed, nigga. Everything at that motherfucker. You could buy some meth, you could buy some crack, and you could buy some heroin. Everything right there at that gas station slash hoagie stops. And they got motherfucking 31 flavors ice cream spot right there. You could get ooh out right there. That nigga pulled a Lambo, hopped out with the biggest dragon chain, not this little ass one. I'm talking about the one the size of a nigga chest, man. Really repping that mob shit, man. Regime mob, man. You know how we do this shit. But the biggest dragon chain in the game, Pretty Black had the biggest dragon chain ever. Nobody nobody had a chain that goddamn big. But anyway, this nigga's at motherfucking the holy spot, nigga. You will get ooh out at that spot in Oakland, nigga. Do not in a Lambo, nigga, hop out with all your shit on. Yeah, nigga. That's respect, my nigga. Straight up, man. Goose to greatness, motherfucker. I see my twin getting it in, man. Hold on, man. Twin, what's happening with it, baby? Yada da. You got a new hookah? You got a, you oh, got some... yeah, come on, man. You, you, yeah, you know, you, you know it don't take that long. Oh. That sound it sound better. <laughs> Cause the other one was like Pfft. that's how that's a, hey, you got a better one, man. You can't even hear yeah. that one. I went from the two hundred one to the four hundred one. Yeah, but that one that one better. I think you yeah. need, I think you need to re-up anyway, man. Period. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I, and this is for people who said I have a toupee. Damn, you can brush your toupee good too. This nigga stupid. Uh, have you ever heard of Pretty Black? Yeah, man. When I used to watch the documentary back in the day, um, I was like, man, the dude got a lot of personality. You know what I mean? He popped his shit. He was confident. You, whenever he would talk, you could hear the comp. Your camera fucked up. You in the Matrix? Say that again. Okay. Oh, oh shit, hold on, Pepper. Hold on. Yeah, what the fuck is up with Storm? The Storm knock over your goddamn. <laughs> yeah, Storm be trying to hey Storm be trying to hop up like it's time for him to get on camera. I'll be like, come on, Storm, stop it. <laughs> Storm fucked up the camera. 
Yeah, yeah Stormy yeah. trying to, Stormy yeah. when he's time to time, he be serious about it too. That storm get big. <laughs> this nigga, man, hold on. All right, let's get back to the doc. Let me fix the camera. Hold on. Back to the documentary. Move, Storm. God damn it. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take you off the camera. Okay, you back on? What yeah, you I'm back. About the ism? So, it was pretty black. He said, and Gangster Brown put him down with the ism. Did you see him out there in uh, Vegas, really rocking? He was really doing it. He stomped down, you know, and plus he was, you know, with some real niggas. Gangster Brown loved him. Ronnie Newt loved him. All the, um, he was official. All the Bay Area peas loved to do. He had great, great energy, man. So whoever killed him was a hater. Definitely. I, that's what I told my nigga on the phone. I'm like, boy, that nigga, whatever. Yeah. Well, 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 let's, let's continue. Fair use, man. More of the story, man. Pretty Black was a, a player of all players, a boss of all bosses, my nigga. MOE, money over everything. I gave him that, nigga. I quoted that to him. He's like, MOE? Okay, cool. It's on a documentary. I, I said it to the nigga at the gas station in the Ville on my projects. We was right there across the street from my projects at the gas station. Me, him, the jacket, everybody in their luxury cars and shit. We about to go to the club. And um, I got MOE from, I just did a show with some niggas out of town. And they crew was called MOE, money over everything. And then, um, boom, you know, niggas like, my, my, money over bitches. I said, M-O-E, money over everything. Uh, the niggas that I just heard say that shit from the show I did. And Black was like, oh, M-O-E? Hell yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, the nigga had M-O-E entertainment, M-O-E chains. It was money over everything, nigga. So, but I heard that from some other niggas. And I just said it because niggas was like, M-O, M-O-B, my, M-O, money over bitch. They're doing that in the parking lot. I said, M-O-E, money over everything. Pretty Black, like, for real? Hell yeah, man, money over everything. And that nigga made the whole label, everything with that shit, man. So, yeah, I coined that from some other niggas, and he took it over, man. Salute to Pretty Black, MOE, money over everything, nigga. Regime Mob, man, rest in peace, uh, Pretty Black, mate. Let's get it. Fair use, let's go. Let's let my nigga count up these cars, man. Let, 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 let my nigga show you how much, uh, yeah, this is just him. This is just him. This is cars. Let's go. This is what we're going to do, Sean Kelly. Every time I name out a car, I just want you to put the price right here so we can calculate exactly how much money I have right here. Okay, see this right here? This is 80. This 80,000 right here. Put the 80,000 right here, Sean Kelly. Put the 80,000 right there. 80,000 right there. It's called a 645 CI Coupe BMW. Um, my man was actually the first one with it, uh, with the glass roof. Him and my nigga Yuck Mouth. Then we go over here to my joint. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me go walk through real fast. When he said him and my nigga Yuck Mouth, I had the drop top. I had the drop top six uh six fifty I. Cool, you know what I mean? On the on the uh on the um on the four G autos. The first nigga on four G autos when niggas didn't know four, what four G autos was. You know what I mean? The first nigga on 4G I was gray. You know what I mean? I had the gray paint. My shit was gray. I had the gray uh, uh, fucking 4G I was a match. It's on the uh, City of Dope album cover. Y'all see it. But the first nigga with the 4G I was, man, I said, everybody was on spinners and shit and, and spree wells. Nigga, I had the 4Gs, nigga. And I got the shit. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. I got them shits from 310, nigga, on, uh, on fucking. Yeah. Uh, from Henry on uh, on Los Angeles, yeah. nigga in Cadillac. Talk your shit in Venice. Yeah. Talk your yeah. shit. One time, and they, and they'll let you know the first nigga on Forges was yeah. Here, you'll see it. You go to a uh, City of Dope. When City of Dope came out, you'll see when it came out. Forgiano, the the fucking beam is on the cover. You'll see. Boom. Let's go. On the black joint, I need you to put the price right here. It's Sean Kennedy. 120, 120. So 80 plus the 120, that's 200,000 right there. Just in whips right there. You know what I mean? This is uh, got the black dimes on there. You can put another five stacks for the rim. You know what I mean? That takes us up to uh, two, uh, 205, 25,000. You know what I mean? This is the joint right here. And then we get over here to the mean monster. 
the, 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 the take your wife with me, Kai. This, this means your wife's coming with me, man. You know what I mean? This right here is about, uh, it's about 220, 220, 225. So that, that takes us up to about almost a half a million worth of cars, man. You know what I mean? That's just some vehicles, man. Not mentioning the ice that's on me, the ice that's on him, the ice that's on him, the ice that's on him. I put it all on my watch, man. That's the whole thing, yeah, shit. That's the whole thing. You know, we got before boy chopping your foot. In my, in my mouth, yeah. shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? MOE thing, you feel me? Your boy Chopper Young City. The Lamborghini, man. Yeah. So that's about, that's about no. 550 for you. Pretty Black was even dating Ludacris's artist Shauna from DDP and founded MOE Entertainment, which Shauna was a part of, and Chapa from making the band. Rapper AP9 from the Mob Figures has a song called R.I.P. Pretty Black, where he even mentioned that Ludacris was hating on Black because he had Shauna. Black was doing big things at this time. He was really focused and was coming strong in the rap game. At this time, his peers, the mob figures, was beefing with the rapper AWAX Heavy, and Black had inherited that beef and dropped a diss aiming at AWAX. No black gon' burn you, AWAX. Yeah, AWAX, you a bitch. What's the internet, thug? An internet, thug. And if a mob figures wouldn't let you rap for them. Black was taking on beef for all his Bay Area people. At the Bars Award, he jumped on stage and got into it with Numskull from the Loonies after Numskull was performing a diss to Yuck Mouth. Black was on all their helmets all by himself at the awards in front of everybody and it's even on camera. I don't know if this was a smart thing. Or nah. Look at all these niggas on stage with black. Not the cameraman. I'm talking about from the rapper niggas. I'm gonna keep on pretty playing. black's part because on top of him being a young success. Black came on stage with the mob, nigga. Regime life, nigga. Numb tried to do the bar wars. I didn't make it there in time. I got there late. But Numb was promoting his uh his new solo album. And his new solo album single was the song Dissing Me. And that nigga try to go to in the Bay Area in San Francisco at the Bars Awards and try to do a diss song on me, nigga. The first nigga that raided the stage, like nigga uh, Kanye West, nigga take uh, what's the name, nigga the white chick Kanye West, nigga Beyonce, nigga the same thing, nigga ODB, ODB when he went to the front of the stage, nigga Wu Tang for the kids, nigga Pretty Black went to the front of the stage, snatched the mic from a nigga and shut all that shit down, man. Period. Straight up, regime mob, nigga, dragon gang, bang, bang. Don't try that shit, nigga. We got niggas everywhere, pool bear. But black riot, nigga, black slid, nigga. And I wasn't there. I ain't get there yet. When I got there, they was like, nigga, black wrote on the nigga numb, numb, try to do this, that, and the third, nigga. Whoop, 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 whoop. It wasn't cool. But uh, yeah, live in, live in effect. You know what I mean? Live in effect mode, man. Let's get Mike Ascari in this motherfucker. Mike, what you talking about, nigga? If it's problems, you better back up, yo. I done put niggas in the line like tic tac toe. Recipes <laughs> are pretty, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. hey man. Recipes are pretty, man. Come on, man. Yo, real hey, it up. But look, man, Pretty Black was the illest nigga in Nebraska, B. Word up, man. Like, that nigga had the mini mansion and drew down, nigga, the jacker. Hustler, all them niggas lived there. They got another mini mansion, nigga. And all them niggas was living there, man. So, yeah, that nigga was putting on, nigga. Period. Putting super on, nigga. He had bitches, nigga. As far as the ism game, he had bitches with good credit. So, niggas that couldn't get a, a luxury car, nigga. He had his bitches putting their cars in their name, like the Jacka luxury car was in, in his bitch name. Uh, a lot of other niggas had their luxury cars in his bitch name, and they just pay her the monthly, you know what I mean? So Black was making sure all his niggas was in luxury cars. He had the bitches with the good credit. You know, real nigga shit. Like, he wasn't no burner if it weren't for the... Man, let me, let me put my face up here right now. Let me get the full screen. Pretty Black brought burner to the table, my nigga. As far as me. 
I don't know about nobody else, but Black brought Vernon to the table. Vernon wanted to buy a verse from me. Black brought me to the studio, you know what I mean, to do a verse with Vernon. That was the first time I met Vernon. Then I knew that he was at the Cannabis Club, and we started tapping in again. Uh, tree from him at the Cannabis Club and vape pens and shit. That was the first with the vape pen and all types of other shit. But that's how we met Vernon through Pretty Black. You know what I mean? So Pretty Black was putting niggas on. Matt Dre, all these niggas, like, we called this shit back in the day verse licks. You know what I mean? How I met Kafani, pretty black. You know what I mean? Like he was bringing everybody through that wanted to spin on verses and, and wanted to do music and shit. So yeah, we know Burner through pretty black. Pretty black brought Burner to the table. Definitely, man. Let's continue, yo. F O rapper from another city getting money the way he was. He was out there taking on Bay Area beef that had nothing to do with him. That can be a sticky situation alone, being an out-of-towner, getting big money, making boss moves. In another city, he wasn't from like Oakland. There is a song where Pretty Black even says, I'm wearing out my welcome, but they turned me out. They say I'm wearing out my welcome, but they turned me out. Squatted up with eight goose boys, they burnt me down. So I ride all night to the sunrise. It's all fun and games till somebody sun dies. Got me asking, is that heaven for a gangster? They try to program us, they can shy gangs. Pretty, you a dirty mother. Say what you want, but I ain't never been a sucker. So I stay strapped, ready to clap a mother. When it's but you gotta feel me, nigga, that's for the skrill These haters gon' try to kill me Got me off a bill, so can you feel me? I hop out on the block and try to kill this I don't think nobody more willing than I I'm crazy, true story, I believe I can fly See, one of these days I have the balls to try Repeat after me, this is scripture for dummies You lose money chasing bitches, never bitches who chasing money Stay away from square niggas, these niggas that's acting funny See, say pretty, you in the streets too much A lot of on you. They want to get you touched. They say you playing defense, they want to get you rushed. But you play with MOE, boy, I get you crushed. Lord, forgive me for me living in sin. See these demons in the streets and I'm living with them. So, Lord, forgive me for I have sin. And if these pussies play with me, y'all do it again. Pretty Black had a lot of questionable verses on that song. It was almost like he was trying to tell us something. And he definitely was speaking about overstaying his welcome in the Bay Area. Besides those beef he inherited, he had his own situations that he was going through in the Bay. He would jump on videos and songs. He would speak about how someone was out to get him and how people were looking for him. Out here, people make money however they can. This can be glamorous and even fascinating, but it can be a very dangerous game. We run into East Oakland rapper Pretty Black a year later. Black gloves keep a black Glock in my stash box. Feds on my case try and crack me like mad lot. You know what I mean? Y'all called me last time in my Monday car. You feel me? It's Sunday today. I ain't in the Lamborghini. I'm in my Sunday car. This is the Sunday whip on the 30th. Off top, man. Anybody will tell you that, nigga. I'm really out here every day in these streets, man. You're usually good in the town, but the murder rate in the town is, is, is unbelievable. I'm about getting money, man. So my rooms is older than me. I just turned 25 two days ago, man. I'm sitting on 30s, man. Say what they want about me. All black got this nigga looking for him. Well, if you looking for me, nigga, it's that hard to find because I'm in the streets every day. So if you run up on this one of these whips, you feel me? Just know you're going to have that 30. 30 or better, man. 30 or better with me at all times. I don't want to see them hollows, man. Niggas getting money, man. Hey, let me let y'all get this coat real quick, man. This is a $600 coat, man. Them crystals on the back of the coat, man. Yeah, that's about a, a soft. 25,000 man right there man that's a soft 50 70,000 for the hummer 15,000 for the rims and i got a soft 10,000 on me they don't call me pretty black aka a walking lick for nothing get that man pretty black man pretty black baby hold on let me get that yeah pretty black baby it's good man love you, love you, love you, you know, man. good when you're in the other city and let me rephrase that gucci man never got his chain back and Black and uh, the Chicago rapper never got the watch back. Black just kept the chain and Gucci Man, whatever he did with the watch, did with the watch. My bad. Gucci Man never got the chain back. Let's go. Getting money like Black was, it's always a good idea to make sure the people around you are also eating too. Because there's always them situations where someone gets backdoored by their own people over jealousy. 
On May 25th, the unexpected would happen and Pretty Black was shot multiple times and unalived at an apartment complex they called the Grooms. On Alvin Groom Court in East Oakland by Castlemont High School where his peoples lived. He came and dropped by the apartment complex that night for a visit and someone then popped his tires on his car. When Pretty Black was entering his car when he was leaving, he realized his car was on flats. And then someone came from the night shooting him multiple times where he died on the scene before the police arrived. This is the location Pretty Black was at when he went to go visit his family the night he was shot and unalived from an unknown assailant in the city of Oakland. Let me tell y'all this, man. The album Grooms was Projects. Whatever he just showed, that's the new album Grooms, like today. The album Grooms is Projects, like the Ville. <clears throat> Anybody in this motherfucker from Oakland can vouch for that. I don't know what the fuck they just showed, but that's the new album Grooms if they knocked it down or rebuilt it. But the album Grooms was fucking Projects, my nigga. I didn't see all them little townhouses and shit that they had. I'm just East Oakland, town business, man. Hit the thumbs up if the album grooms is a project, nigga. I never seen that new structure shit that he just showed. Right? All right, cool. Unique in this motherfucker. Sis in this bitch, man. We still need motherfucking uh uh fucking uh Keisha Cole on the show, sis. Stop playing with us, unique. Let's go, let's continue, man. I met Pretty Black uh, at a show one time. He was a youngster. He was an entertainer, you know? More than a hustler, he was an entertainer. He wasn't the best rapper out here, but he hustled through entertainment. He was living lavish, and I think a lot of people didn't like that. You feel me? He had it all, you know, at a young age. And some people out here, it's, it's like a jealousy ring. When she came out the house, and his tires was on a flat. When, as soon as he got to the front gate, somebody, like, smacked him up. You know what I'm saying? And you young niggas, man, really y'all best better stay in school. Cause if I could do it again, all side, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be playing basketball, getting one of these million dollar checks. I ain't gonna be out here risking my life every day doing the shit I'm doing, you feel me? So to the youngsters, man, if y'all gonna do this gangster shit, be the best gangster you gonna be. If you gonna do the school shit, apply that shit to the best of your abilities, man. Cause this street shit really ain't about nothing, man. You feel me? Dying out here in the streets, man. Niggas losing their lights every day. This shit real, nigga. So if you're gonna play in this shit, just be ready to play it how it go, nigga. Cause you know what I mean? Karma is a muff. Cases did they ever catch the killer? No. No, they didn't catch the killers. None of the killers has been caught. None of them have been caught in the three cases that I know of. And my friends have no killers have been caught. Nobody haven't came forward. Nobody has told. Nobody has said nothing. I just want to know why. What made you just walk out like, I'm about to kill Pretty Black today or tonight? Or Pretty Black passed away at age 25. And until this day, it's a cold case that's still unsolved. There is a video on YouTube where this YouTube channel named A Humble Soul interviewed Black's people. And one of his partners spoke about how before Pretty Black was murdered, his boy was at a barber shop and how he overheard some dude speaking about on how there was money on Black's head. Uh, I was at the barber shop one day and niggas was in there talking about like some money being on Black or something. And they just talking and I'm just listening. And I'm like, oh, okay, you feel me? I'm just soaking it up. Like, look how look like like look how loose lip niggas be. Niggas just sitting here talking about some shit. Niggas they know who they around. So after I get the story, I go, I go, um, I leave the shop and I go, I go pull up on black. Cause mind you, I hadn't been around a nigga like that. And I'm like, bro, this is what I'm hearing. He kind of got, yeah, you know I mean, he cleared up. He gave me a different perspective on it of what uh, what was going on. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But he was like, give me a ride. To the, um, go get something to eat, cause I'm like, nigga. When he was like, give me a ride to get something to eat, I'm like, nigga, what a Hummer. 
And he's like, oh, nigga, we was doing too much on the strip last night. Nigga, the Hummer got towed. So I'm laughing like a motherfucker. Like, all right, nigga, come on. So we go we go to Wendy's to go get something to eat. And as we going to go get something to eat, he tell me the, the little story, what was going on. I'm like, oh, okay, because I heard some wild shit. You feel me? And then he was like, nah, it ain't like that. You feel me? It's like this. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But she- also, his boy said they could never put a finger on his murder because there was a lot of issues going on at the time. There was internal beef and there was also outside beef. They also spoke about how he might have been unalive over robbing someone and they have gotten revenge. Pretty Black had a bad reputation for robbing dudes. Oakland isn't nothing soft, so for an out-of-towner to come to the Bay Area robbing cats was definitely not a smart move for longevity. When I was gone in Texas and I heard about the shit that happened, you feel me? I, I couldn't really put a finger on it because it was hella shit going on at the time. Hey, fuck that, man. I, I ain't let niggas disrespect my nigga name, man. Black one no motherfucking robber, man. That nigga was a hustler, my nigga. Period. I'm going to tell you one situation, how he got the Lambo. And he bought the Lambo cash, nigga, the next day. They made a play, nigga. A super play, nigga. That boy had a, a $4 million diamond, nigga. Sold it to a jeweler. Nigga, they made the play at my studio, nigga. I had my security come hold it down with choppers, nigga. They gave that nigga a duffel bag for that motherfucking diamond, nigga. And that nigga went the next day and bought the motherfucking Lambo, Cash Chevelli. The jeweler also gave him that big ass motherfucking uh, dragon chain. He made it, you know what I mean? That's also part of the deal. You know, also, you know, for me, you know, hooking them up, you know, gave me a couple pieces and shit. Gave us a few dragon chains and shit, and you know, wops and boobops and bells and whistles and shit. But I seen that nigga make money plays. I ain't never seen that nigga rob nobody, backdoor nobody in my motherfucking life, man. So I ain't gonna I ain't gonna put that on my nigga name, man. Period. Not at all. Rumors, yeah, but I ain't never seen no shit like that. I seen niggas bring duffel bags to the, I seen one guy. I ain't never seen this. You know, besides, all we had was music together. So that was the only time, you know, I seen him make a play. If he did some other shit behind closed doors, that's on him. I never knew about it. But he been a hustler. That nigga always was bringing money to the table and bags to the table. And that's what I know him for. I don't know him for no backdoor shit. Like, we got a lot of money, a lot of jewels and shit, a lot of, like, just us. Like, back though, he would have had us robbed, had us oop. So. I don't see that, you know what I mean? I ain't never seen it, but, you know, let them tell it, you know. But for my shit, I ain't never seen them rob nobody. Fair use. Let's go. It was internal shit going on. It was outside shit going on. It was sideline shit going on. It was hella shit going on, bro. You feel me? And, um, you know, when I heard about black passing, you feel me? I couldn't really put a finger on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? I have I had some ideas, I had some thoughts or whatever, but I was out the way, so I couldn't confirm or deny none of that. When I was doing my research, I saw a couple of comments online where some people had made some like some little posts on some message boards before he actually was killed saying that he had robbed them dog and that, that they was going to get like revenge in so many words. And when you was just talking about the money on his head, was it something about like him robbing somebody or something like that? Um, when I was in the barbershop, the niggas didn't get no specifics on what it was. First of all, if you mob and you in a barbershop, you supposed to slide a nigga. Period. A nigga talking about put a hit on your nigga head, you supposed to slide a nigga. I don't appreciate that. And I know who's talking right now. I try to figure it out, but I know exactly who's talking right now. But look who's in this picture right here, right? Cool. I stopped rocking with Pretty Black because he put me in problems with niggas in these pictures. And real mob niggas know who's in this picture. You know what I mean? The niggas that's in this picture. You know, you could connect the dots. But um, some shit that happened, you know what I mean? And um, I was getting pressed, you know. And I had to separate. You know, you got to separate the elevate, bro. Period. I can't get pressed for some alleged shit that, you know, you did. You know, so I had to separate the elevate, and that's when me and uh, Pretty Black stopped rocking with each other and shit. So 
when dude talking about eternal beef, it wasn't no eternal beef. I just separated. You know what I mean? We just separate. Let black do what he do. You know what I mean? Until he clear shit up. You know what I mean? Because I was getting pressed for shit that he allegedly did. You know what I mean? Not on a robber shit, but on, you know, whatever their business was. You know what I mean? Period. And um, yeah, I had to separate. Like, yo, I can't do that no more. I can't be around. You know what I mean? People that's put my life in danger for, you know, whatever they doing. You know, and I don't know what they doing. You know what I mean? We doing music. We we compilations, group albums, whatever niggas do when they leave the studio, I don't know. And now I'm getting pressed for some shit that niggas did when they left the studio. That ain't got nothing to do with it. So hey, my, and my Go question ahead. is, my question is, Yuck, how do niggas know that he he came out and saw his tire on flat and tried to get back in unless they was there when this shit happened to him? Like, how do niggas know this? Well, like if there was no assailants and nobody know who. Go ahead, go ahead. was on flat when they found him. You know, that's 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 how they put that together. But how they know to play? Like a nigga came and did this and then he popped up. How they know to? Well, you know, come on, man. Like we all right. from the hood. We all from the hood. Anything that happened, niggas, niggas gonna hear the play, play for play, and niggas ain't gonna snitch on who did it, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, but that that be my thing. What what niggas should just be quiet on on shit like that because because that shit right there is the shit that can self impl impl implicate a nigga. Like if if, if it wasn't no assailants and nobody saw nothing. Nigga, how do you got these details, then, nigga? Because that's that's some hell of fire details. Or oh, a nigga came out and saw his tire on flat, and he tried to go back in. Nigga, how, how do you know that unless you there watching it? You know what I mean? I wasn't there, and I I done heard a lot of detail about what happened, and I wasn't there. So niggas in the town, like just in L.A., if some shit happened in L.A., niggas know exactly what happened before the tabloids even figure it out. Like when Pac got killed, everybody knew. Everybody in L.A. knew who did it. It just took a long time for because it was a war in Compton for that. So everybody knows exactly who did it. But we didn't know. The world didn't know. You know what I mean? So the streets know, my nigga. Period. Like, ain't got to go to the tabloids and shit. The streets know. And the streets going to activate. You know? Oh, that's I ain't a saying, fact, man. I ain't, saying a fact. On this, I ain't saying on this situation, but, you know, just in general, you know? Let's get my nigga uh, uh, Calico up in this motherfucker. Let's take a little little smoke break, man. Niggas, roll up, man. Roll up right quick, man. Just pull up a drink, nigga. You know what I mean? Pull some liquor out for my nigga Pretty Black. Calico, man. What you guys say about this situation, man? This documentary, man. This shit is deep, man. It's live, oh, man. man. Fuck with it. It's definitely deep, man. It's deep as fuck, man. First and foremost, man, salute to the panel, the motherfucking chat. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, hurry up and pop the locks for a real nigga, man. Salute to the motherfucking fire breathing dragon and the unseen bully, man. Um, appreciate it. Salute, it's salute. Good. Appreciate you, man. It's, it's definitely a good one, man. I ain't, I, I wasn't able to catch it all, man, but you definitely bringing niggas up to speed, man. And if anybody who deserves and reserves the right to speak on this shit, it's definitely the fire breathing dragon, man. For real. No, we, we separated, you know what I mean? And at that time, he was doing a full MOE thing. He had Shauna, he had Chopper from, from uh, making the band. That was his artist. Mm -hmm. It was running it up, my nigga. So I was proud of the nigga, you know what I mean? But I was in danger, nigga. They were street beef. Shit, I'm all right, my nigga. It, niggas pulling up to my two story studio, nigga knocking on the boom, 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 boom. Where your nigga at, man? What's up? <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking about. Right. My friend, boom, 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 boom. Where your nigga at? I don't know what y'all talking about. Boom, 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 boom. Week later, boom, boom, boom. They come on, like, have you seen a new Canaan? And when the nigga uh, <laughs> Ronnie knocked <laughs> on the door, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> yeah, you weren't playing. Hey, niggas wasn't playing about it, man. And it's like I ain't got nothing to do with what niggas do behind closed doors. That's on y'all, bro. So. You know, I think the part that's the most sad is going back to when he was sitting in the hummer talking about how, man, if y'all in the school, stay in school, because the street life ain't shit. Da, 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 this is all of the pitfalls that come with it. it. It just seemed like so many men, especially men that look like us, have jumped in front of these cameras, whether it's on documentaries, videos, or et cetera, 
that say those those words that's almost prophecy to a motherfucker's outcome within a short period of time after those words came out their mouth, man. That'd be the stomach turning part, man. Yeah, that 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 was the spooky part about it. When he man. said that, that was the spooky part about it. Like he actually said that, then <laughs> then, then the worst happened. Like God, man. Like my thing is, is like pretty black had so much potential, so much money, like whatever <laughs> down, whatever hatred, you know what I mean, that was going down around him. He was in LA, man. Like, I don't know why he went back to the Bay. He, got, he had big ass this niggas that was in, like, by the, what is shit, where's the water at? Marina Del Rey, this nigga. Marina always, Del Rey, Santa Monica. This um, nigga the water I'm and Marina cool. Del Rey, nigga, big boy shit, nigga. Like, why are you? He bought the Lambo in L.A., nigga. They had a big crib in L.A. They doing it. Why go back out there, man? Like, you know, like, I've been moving out the Bay, man. That, that's a player's graveyard. I hate to say it, man, but that's a player's graveyard. Like, a lot of niggas can't really prosper out there, man. You prosper, you become a target. That's why you never see our NBA stars, our NFL stars. None of them motherfuckers slide through the town and no luxury shit. Them niggas be in the Uber or something. Cause they know better. They're gonna try to follow them home, rob them, jack them, you know, the whole shit. You know, so it's it's ugly out there. Period. I moved to LA because when I ride my luxury car, I blend in. Cause there's a million other luxury cars out here. Period. What's up? What's up? You know, I mean, it's fucked yeah, up that it gotta be that way, man. And um, I mean, hey, I blame Shaq. it on the, I blame it on the poverty more than the people. Because that shit is bound to happen anywhere that it's a high rate of poverty like that. I wouldn't give a fuck if it was in Beverly Hills or in motherfucking Ghost Town. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you, wherever you Bro, put a high level saying, of poverty I, at, man. I had to come out here where I could blend in, like where nobody gonna right. follow me. Like I got a bed. It's a nigga with a Lambo right in front of me. Who you gonna follow? I. Right. <laughs> you ain't following that nigga. Right. Hey, shout out! Hey, shout out to Octavius Miller, man. Bro, uh, Secret Miller, brother, man. He sent me a message, man. He say, "Uh, Pretty Black was a real dude, man. You know, rest, rest up to Pretty, man." Hell is solid, man. We wouldn't get no burner, bro. Man, Pretty Black put burner on, man. He put he linked burner with the jacket and me, nigga. That was that was Pretty Black connection, nigga. And look at burner right now, nigga. That that whole shit came from Pretty Black, my nigga. Period. Mac Dre, like Mac Dre, he, me and Mac Dre up with hella plays. Nose and verses, hella shit. We want no Kafani if it weren't for, for Pretty Black. He put Kafani on. Like Pretty Black brought a lot of shit to the fucking table, man. Nigga, that nigga was a pure hustler, my nigga. I'm talking about really mover and shaker. You know what I mean? I'm talking about industry mover and shaker, like independent, like just wiggling and making power moves, my nigga. That's why I, I turn my nose up at that robbery shit. It's like, come yeah, on, my nigga. Come on, the, my nigga. A nigga with a pocket full of money, man. The last thing he's thinking about is robbing him. another motherfucker, oh, man. man. A nigga pull up in a Lambo and rob you? That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. That's like a nigga putting his shoes on and putting his socks on top of his shoes. Nigga, shit don't make no sense. <laughs> That's sad, my nigga. That's sad. Nah. He, I ain't never seen, I ain't never heard about no robbing shit. I heard he was beating niggas' asses, though. That nigga had a Thunderdome, man. That nigga, hey, man. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it a buck, man. That nigga beat up the, the motherfucking fruit of Islam, man. He beat one of them niggas' sons' ass at the club, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh. Y'all heard about that one? Oh my! I hear about that. It was a shit called the Seven. What, remember, it was called the Seven downtown Oakland. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he slid one of the Muslim niggas. He had beef with the Muslims, hell of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, them ain't no easy niggas to beef with. In the nah, this was Thunderdome. It wasn't like he robbed a nigga. Like, black and slide niggas. That's what I'm saying. He'd beat a nigga ass. He'd take your bitch. That type of shit make a nigga hate. Cause a robbery? Nah, nigga, I don't, I don't see that, man. Yeah, I ain't got, bro. I remember we was grinding in West Oakland, bro. We was in front of this Muslim nigga house in front of this apartment. We was in these apartment complex. It was called, one the, seven, it was called uh, uh, Monique. It was called the Seventeen, not the Seven. The Seventeen. You right, Monique. 
Thank you. Monique, tap in, man. I'm about to throw the link out right one more yeah, time. Throw the link out so Monique can come on up here. Yeah, Monique, you gotta tap in. Town business, man. Let's go. I gotta say what's up to Mike and I gotta say what's up to Network Calico. What's going on, y'all? Man, what's up with the unseen bully, man? The motherfucking gooch, man. Hey man, I'm low key as a midget door now. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Black was a boss, nigga. He wasn't no robber, my nigga. That's that's all I'm gonna say, my nigga. Period. He was an extra super mover and a shaker, man. Let's continue until uh, unique tap here. Look up. Fair use. But they were just talking about you know niggas in the, in the shop running their mouth. So I didn't know where it was coming from, but I know for sure they were saying that it was some money on the nigga. Head. So when I talked to him, and he was telling me, uh, he was telling me that it was a miscommunication about some. Shit. It was really simple for real, but when you, but he already had a reputation a little bit for robbing niggas. You know what I'm saying? And when you got a reputation like that, that easily put something on you and say, you know what I'm saying? All the niggas did this or the niggas did that. But that is what he was. Uh, it pretty much was. It pretty much was. Uh, he was saying that he tried to rob him. He was like, "Hey man, see this same nigga that's talking right now is supposed to be pretty black." Ten toes down, rider. How you gonna do this motherfucking interview and say he was known as a robber, my nigga? That's uh -huh. Maney, bro. I know who this nigga is. It's the same nigga that wrote, man. This nigga Maney. He, he's the most. What Judah? When you got Judah in the clique, he used to, he he used to be part of the regime. So this nigga, and he was really close to pretty black. For you to say this stupid ass shit, my nigga, boy. He was known as a rival. Like, whoa. Mm, mm, mm. I was close to Pretty Black, and I ain't known this nigga as a robber, bro. Like, what type of shit you saying? Are you supposed to be like, he, the, the way he approached me, like, he was Pretty Black, right man. And I ain't never seen that. I ain't never seen this nigga around, but just at the Bars Awards and probably a video shoot or two. I ain't never seen this nigga at the mini mansion. Never seen it with us mobbing and when we doing a back-to-back -back forums and shit, the studio out here I had in LA, the, the shit we had, the, I ain't never seen them there. So for you to say some stupid shit like this, boy, shows your real loyalty, but you in front of me like, nigga, 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 nigga. he tried to say pretty black, then fuck with me. Nigga, pretty black, then fuck with you. The fuck you talking about? What, that what, big what, ass what, with that big ass dragon that, chain on, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Had the biggest, he had the biggest Cisco dragon chain in life. Yeah. Well, nigga, what you seeing that we ain't seeing? <laughs> Every picture you see this thing got a big ass dragon on. He raised your yeah. mind, nigga. Come on, that nigga man. wasn't fucking with you. He was doing a horrible job. <laughs> horrible job, my nigga. Like, come on, man. Let's stop the bullshit, man. I got my nigga no. paid. I told you I hooked him up with my, my peoples and they bust a big ass duffel bag play over a four million dollar diamond, nigga. So I got that nigga a lot of bread, my nigga. So he had no problem with me, nigga. I had a problem with the issues I was getting because of him. So I separated, not him. So nigga, come on, man. Don't play like that. But this nigga saying this stupid shit, boy, I can't wait to see your dusty ass. Hey, and yeah, you know why when you separated a nigga ain't even, you know why nigga ain't never even tried to run no smear campaign? When you separated because as a motherfucking friend, the nigga respect that move. No, nah, he knew what it was because I didn't separate. I gave him an ultimatum, like, man, get it together. Right. You know? and, and I gave him a long time to get it together. He never got together, so he gave me no choice. You know, it was like, bro, get it together. You know, they calling me. They own me. Get it together. They calling me. They own me. Get it together. They calling me. All right, bro. I'm going to just separate myself and, you know, for a minute. And I'm still saluting him at this time. He bossing up. You know, he just got the duffel bag for the big boy diamond. You know, bought the Lambo the next day. Nigga, they up. Nigga, they shining them. They doing album release parties. Nigga, I was at the album release party after we separated. You know, so he had the album release party in Hollywood. You know? Big boy shit, man. That club was packed, nigga. They performing pretty black through about, nigga. I want to say I saw four, five thousand up, nigga. Ah, 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 on stage, nigga. Did it big, nigga. 
So mm. I was there, my nigga, I was there, nigga. So for niggas to say some bullshit, like, nah, we are still connected. But as far as the rage team, I just let them do MOB, MOE, and we as a mob, you know, we just separated on that type of shit. But I was still a homie, though, off top, and I was proud of them, period. So let's continue. Fair use. Like that, you feel me? And uh, nothing to say, like, in them words, but it's basically just a miscommunication for real. When these niggas did this, and he said it ain't like that, but since he already got a reputation, you know what I'm saying? They get the nigga, they get a nigga the doubt of the benefit as opposed to the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, it, it sounded like it was miscommunication at the time for real. And uh, I'm like, okay. So when I left, the, I didn't really feel like it was nothing too crazy. I know in the streets talking, but that ain't nothing new. That's what they do. But I mean, that nigga knew what time it was. Like I said, it ain't like he was oblivious or he was green. That nigga knew, that nigga knew you know what I'm saying? What he was doing and how, and how to move and, and what to do and what not to do. So, you know what I'm saying? But that's what we used to always tell Black, though, when he was out here. We used to be trying to tell him, like, bro, you got to be cool. Like, it ain't Chicago. Like, we don't use the Chicago. And at the time, Chief Keith wasn't out yet. And I don't know about the drill scene and all that shit. But we know Chicago organized and Black got real. Shut your bitch ass up, man. This nigga that's talking is bullshit. Nobody never said no shit like that to Pretty Black. We always mobbing. We is with the mob figures. Everybody mobbing, nigga. The regime, the mob figures. We all mobbing, nigga. From here to Kansas City to motherfucking uh, Ohio, we mobbing, nigga. Period. The fuck you talking about? Oh, we all told. Pre Nobody told that nigga shit. The fuck you talking about, man? We just tell them, nigga. It's Chicago, and we didn't have Chief Keith. The fuck you talking about, man? I, I just had to flash on this. My bag for this outburst, but man, nigga, you don't know my nigga, man. Talking this stupid ass shit, man. Who the fuck is this talking? And I know exactly who it is, but you don't need to be talking on my nigga like this, bro. Period. When you only met this nigga at a few shows, nigga. Stop it, slime. Fair use. Let's go. This nigga just made me flash. The fuck you talking about? You told a nigga. Real ties to Chicago. And I got real ties to Chicago through black got and met along the way. So we was familiar with how the nigga and groove but it's different than how we move and groove in the bay so with him coming out here doing shit, sometimes he be doing shit that we don't see as being smart or we don't see as just being a, a, a good move for longevity out here and black heard all the concerns he addressed them and he decided that he was gonna move this kind of way because that's who he was and he wasn't scared of none of these I don't even want my face showing when dude is talking. <laughs> Hold on. When that nigga talks, I'm going to do this. <coughs> I don't want my face associated with hate. Pretty Black was winning. Okay, uh, we're going to let we're going to uh, talk some shit right quick, man. I want to get a uh, uh, unique in this motherfucker. She really with the mob. She really know what time it is, but let's get it's me, bro. Killer, what's happening, my nigga? Nigga, <laughs> killer. The way it do, bro, bro. Killer, do not be on Jack Downs tonight, Dynamite. <laughs> what? Uh, Hold on, who's going to lie? Hold on, man. Don't show the bottle, man. Hold on, man. Don't show I'm the right. bottle. I know. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show the bottle, bro. <laughs> I try to you, smell you, you out. You gotta tell that nigga to show the bottle for that nigga not to show the bottle. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell Goose um, right now, I don't know what the hell I made him so mad about. What the, what the fuck did I do? He got pissed. My bad, Goosey. Roll it. Yucky. <laughs> what you got to say about me, my nigga? I ain't do nothing wrong. No, I actually want to ask you that's the kill you had when we was at Laylaw's funeral or the repast. What what was that shit called? That shit was good. Oh, that's that uh that's this right here. The that homo. Right here, I, I don't even like the killer. That shit was I thought oh, it was no. promo, but that shit was it worked. You see it? It's that like in the day. Let me put that back up there, man. They used to sponsor us, man. 
They still trying to get in stores. But Lyanna Day Mayco, man, that big the boy. The bottle was crazy. I was like, I was trying to tell my homeboy about that. Yeah, the bottle. I'm game. Have to work with that. Yeah, this is that Lyanna Day Mayco, man. They still trying Where to get Where is it at? Out. They still trying to get it out here. That's why they stopped the sponsorship until they get it more out here. You know what I mean? Okay. Once they get it out here, nigga, it's, it's on, nigga. Period. I gather that. I do. I wanted to say one one thing, and you know, it, well, first of all, that the guy speaking for the bay, shut up, shut the fuck up, shut up. I'm, I'm dead serious, brother. You don't know what you' about to get your ass into. No homo. Oh, let, no homo. You don't know okay. what you' about to get involved in, Jack. Shut the fuck up, homie. Yeah, you gonna watch this podcast? Shut yeah. up. Shut the fuck up. And look, let's get my let's get my let's get my sis up in this. Uh, I ain't want to remove you. You still up in this motherfucker. Let me. Uh, oh, let I, me... I, I got one more thing to say. What up, Memphis. What up? We didn't get on Memphis yet. Who? We talked about Memphis last night. But, but me, but like... yeah, but Goose destroyed me. All right, look, look. Let's let's stay the content. We get <laughs> the Wait, what would he say? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me get my sister in this motherfucker. Unique in the building, sis. What's happening, sis? What's good? What's good? Salute, salute, salute. salute. Hey, this is tapping in from the town. This is town business, man. Sis, how you feel about this documentary, man? Rest in peace, of pretty black. Man, it's just crazy. Like it's going down memory lane. Like that shit just brought back a lot of a lot of memories, man. But um. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of, um, you know, talk about certain things. It's just, no matter what happened, the shit was unfortunate, man. You know? But, facts. But, but look, <coughs> whoever hear that he was a robber or a boss, like a hustler, I always knew I this nigga. Only know, when I met him, he was 19 years old, and he was in that Range Rover, and he was trying to get this hoe I was with to go to Vegas. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> right, he was a hustler. He was like, on some know, so I don't, I don't know him to be none of that. But you know, people, when you, you know, when you, when you rocking like that, you know, people want to come up with an excuse for why you got that money. And so, some people didn't know, you know, about his brother. <clears throat> and, you know, so, so people was trying to say they already had planted the seeds because they was trying to say that's why he left Chicago. You feel me? So they was they was trying to plant them seeds on him for a while. I ain't never seen it, sis. And I was with the nigga for Me years. Either. For years. All yeah. I see, all I see was play. Plays to the table. All I know was Big Mike, his brother, owned a lot of real estate. I know niggas was in big boy mansions, mini mansions, niggas in luxury cars. If his nigga didn't have a luxury car, nigga, his bitch had credit. And he had to, had to put the car. Like, remember the Jack had his car and, and his girl credit. Hella niggas from the hood. All the niggas, mm-hmm. the old niggas everywhere had they motherfucking car from Pretty Black because this girl had the credit. And they were just playing their car note through them. Yeah. Straight up. That ain't no robbery shit. Can I ask yeah. a question? I'm not sure. sure if people can hear me. Yeah, we can hear your ass, you drunk ass nigga. <laughs> How did homeboy go out? They popped him? Yeah, he got shot. He got shot up. Where? Um, in Oakland, in the Alvin Groom uh, projects. Sis, did the Alvin Groom look <laughs> look like that? The I was gonna play that new shit with it. Hell <laughs> nigga, no. that, I said, nigga, that's the Alfred Groom, nigga. <laughs> I, I for sure he wasn't going in Alvin Groom. I went in there one time and I went to Castle My. I used to smoke outside that motherfucker, but <laughs> I don't know. Was that new random? shit? That they- that well, new shit, shit that they showed, that's well, the shit, Alfred room. The shit with the projects, right? It wasn't no light. That new luxury shit they showed. Mm-hmm. Like... No, was it didn't it even random? look like no shit you was going to go in unless you knew somebody in there. Was I mean, it, it definitely wasn't a place a nigga wanted to hang out. Right, the grooms was one way in, one way out, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Unique, what's up with my nigga, though, man? What's up with it, family? What's up, Kumi? Good evening. Rocking with the mob, man. You already know. Yeah. Mobbing, man. 
but black black was a factor, man. Black I, I tell man. you, I tell you this much: that nigga, that nigga, man, look, all look, pretty black. It, I mean, we already know how niggas feel about the Jack, but I'm just saying, like, I'm I'm probably one of the most regime regimed out niggas behind behind any any prison yard I'd have been on. You know what I'm saying? We was definitely on pretty black. Like, you know what I mean, I, in fact, I was just knocking that that Jack with him all over that today, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that nigga was dope, bro. Like, I mean, niggas always try to tarnish your character, man. And I mean, and, and a lot of times it be the niggas is closest to you, man. That's the most fucked up part about it. Or the niggas that after you gone, they pretend to be the closest to you. You know what I mean? But them niggas were close to you in real life. They was at a distance. They were somewhere near you waiting for you to fall. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is what we call cherry picking. Nigga cherry picking right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that how, that's how I view it. Talking on the phone? Cherry picking like a motherfucker, man. You we know who that is. We, we you yeah. niggas, we, know, we know who that is. We ain't gonna say his name, but that nigga is boy. <laughs> he, he was known as a jacker, like whoa, we was known as a robber. He was robbing there. Whoa, where did we hear that? <laughs> right, and that take away from all the shit that we know him to do, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, right. okay, that would have been the small of it if it was, you know what I'm saying? He was doing a lot of shit. I can tell this young. man not a lot of love. Can I have one more question? I mean, hey, yeah, you drunk ass nigga, talk your shit. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> we ain't talking about E Black for the is it is a man from the race, ain't it? Not E Black, pretty black. Oh, he from the regime too, though. Pretty black from the regime. You mm -hmm. seen the big ass dragon change? Mm hmm. I do, and I did. Rest yeah. peace, homeboy. He mobbed out Chicago edition, man. But um, it's like uh, what we were talking about the other night, man, how how the West Coast claim Tupac, we claim pretty black, man, because the Bay Area put that nigga on, bro, period, straight up, man. He from Chicago, yeah, 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 but nigga, his rap career started in the Bay, so he's a Bay Area nigga to me, straight up. And that Gucci I man just... shit, he, nigga, Gucci man them love that nigga. They fuck with him the long way. Unique, I'm just unique. Yeah, unique. Let him know how tough he was fucking with Gucci man, uh, fucking the uh, with the mama, uh, Waka Flocka mama, the manager, the whole shit. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, even like when he popped out with Shonda, like I remember her coming to the club in Oakland and shit. It was like, yo, this little nigga right here <laughs> is moving yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, that dude. shit is all accurate. So I was a little surprised to hear. You know this story the way that he told it, but you know no, we gonna get to tell you. We gonna get to you, man. Let's mm -hmm. get to you. Let, let's let's get the, the rest of it. It's only about two more minutes. Let's go. Okay. In and doing his thing, and you, we all know that you. comes with hate. And if you out here doing some shady stuff to people in the streets, that brings karma. And like I spoke about earlier, if you get into the money. Make sure your people around you are also getting to it. Make sure you don't have that one hater around you that wants to backdoor you over jealousy. That could have been an outside job or inside job situation. We will never really know the truth. If his own people claiming to never know what happened, we for sure as people looking in will never know the truth behind that hit. Sad situation, man. Pretty Black left his son behind and his brother Big Mike. And definitely left an upcoming successful rap career. And you know, I'm in the streets of Oakland right now. Jewel, we fucks with it. We young street niggas, man. You feel me? And, and, and the mob is what it is. I'm all out with this. I'm from an organized city, man. I'm from an organized crime city, man. Chicago, where gang, gangs damn near originated at. So my loyalty to the mob and my loyalty to what I'm doing right now is bigger. It's, it's, it's my life right now. I mean, I say it all the time. God forbid, Allah forbid, man, that, you know what I mean? My pride one day might get me killed. But my, my, I'm a prideful person, man. You feel me? And You know what I mean? And if, and if you fucking with my pride, man, you know what I mean? It's going to be proud. You never hear about Pretty Black, and with this YouTube platform I have, I wanted to speak about all the rappers I really mess with, whether they're really known or not, or if they're dead or alive. I'm going to remember the first. All right. We don't need you to say no more, Turbo. Is this man? Okay, can I, can I land my helicopter? Please, from the outside <laughs> looking in. 
is this man speaking on this topic from the Bay? Yeah, he got to be. He sounds like a white boy. Yeah, most motherfucking uh, editors of this film niggas is white boys. <laughs> he Latino. I can hear it in his voice. Yeah, now, now he, he said, man, dude, okay. The, the, your, he from your, your hood, your organization. He's from the mob. He's from the regime. But he's from Chicago, mm -hmm. and he's from the back. It, this shit can get messy. It got messy. Oh, Lord. Say less. No, that should happen years ago. That should happen hella years ago. It just happened. It, and it happened recently. Yeah. So this, this re so homeboy just brought this up again? Yeah, he brought it up because they give pretty black as flowers. Like, he broke down a whole little documentary on them just before getting to the drama at the end, you know? So Okay, brother. I thought that I, I don't know. So I'm learning as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Pretty black regime, my, uh, you know what I mean, Chicago. He started with uh with uh fucking uh three times crazy bar, you know what I mean, fucking mob figures. They had a group called the Dope Gang. You know what I mean? He was versatile. He came to the bay in a range rover, big boy Jewels, all the shit, man, from the rip. You know what I mean? Raw records, you know what I mean, the whole shit. So yeah, man, he, he made that nigga was out there doing his one too. No. And he was moving fast, you know what I mean? Like every time I seen him, it was an update and it was progression. When I first, I didn't even meet him through the music shit. Like, but when I started telling him, you know, about what I was up to, he started, he was showing me pictures of y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then Sorry. like Gangsta Brown came up, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know Brown, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's, I mean, it really was like that. And then it was like 10 minutes later, you know, was the first style album. Or whatever that was, and then it was, you know, but it was fast though. It's like looking back, I'm like, damn, that was like five, six years. Three times dope know? or three times crazy. Uh, three yeah. times crazy. Okay, and I know exactly what you're talking about. That nigga said three. That nigga said three times dope. The baby man was out for cold watching my world. Three times dope. 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 Hey, talk your shit. Talk, talk your shit. Talk your shit. Unique. They, 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 they let, let unique man alive. Yeah, let, no, I just was saying about his name though. Like he, he, the in the in the doc, they said that you know his name was versed out first, but we called him Chicago first, and then it was versed out, and then it was pretty black. No, we called him Shy Town. Well, yeah, Shy Town. We called the nigga Shy Town. You absolutely right. right. We just called the nigga Shy Town. We mm -hmm. never called the nigga Verse Style. Never. <laughs> ever, ever, we were like Chateau on oh, Mamas, yeah. right? Uh -huh. We yeah. never called that nigga versatile, whatever that, that nigga is. That shit didn't stick for nothing. That shit didn't stick in the bed. That's why he switched up <laughs> pretty black. That shit didn't stick. We like Chateau. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my, I forgot about that. We called the nigga Chateau. You said mm -hmm. Chicago. We called him Chateau. Yeah. Definitely, that's crazy. And then I talked about how we wouldn't know burner if it wasn't for that nigga. Like he mm -hmm. introduced me in the jacket to that nigga. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's uh, crazy. Uh, fucking a uh, Capani. We wouldn't know Capani. That nigga brought Capani to the table. And that's right. crazy he because he was doing that shit before filthy, before you know what I'm saying, coming out right. there mobbing and like, what the fuck is that? And he was tapping in with all the independent niggas, my nigga. Like yeah. he, he brought Kafani to the table. Kafani had had to like the, the tech man, the, the tech uh whatever whatever he was doing, that nigga had computers and flat screens. When the flat <laughs> first came out, niggas was doing first flat screens and laughing Mac computers, nigga fucking with Kafani. Nigga, I did a, a verse got a Mac computer and a flat screen, nigga. We put that shit in pretty black homeless and we said <laughs> He's the fuck off, mate. Hey, let me say something. Uh, Yuck 
me and this man go back far, but we just came across the other again, no homo, at a fucking fucked up funeral. But you know how many people yuck is put on? Countless. Oh, come uh, on, man. Mother, over a hundred people, group after group after group after group. What? Hey, 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 Yuck, listen to this. Hey, unique, you on the flow with me. you? You you on the stage with us right now? Did I not get into it with some niggas on stage about Yuck? <laughs> what up, niggas? Yes. What up, niggas? <laughs> nigga, uh, what, what, I'm like, nigga, how y'all niggas gonna leave? Yeah, 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 how y'all gonna leave? Yuck out of the motherfucking top 50 of all time, nigga, West Coast artists, period, oh. nigga. Like, nigga, they had, oh, man, nigga, they, they had niggas like Mac 10 in these. I'm like, what the fuck? These, I mean, shout yeah. out to them dudes, though. But well, sorry about that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I'm just saying, nigga, it's like, it's a, <laughs> I mean, that shit just annoyed the fuck out of me, man. Period. They, 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 they be playing with they be playing with me, man. But I ain't I ain't go through the rituals, man. When I when a nigga go through the rituals, you're gonna be they gonna put you up there. I ain't I ain't do it. I'm like cat Williams. I was going hey, to yeah, I don't know if you it. My nigga, I'm against the grain, nigga. So I'll never be considered the top. You know what I mean? Because I don't do the top, nigga. Whatever they do, I don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen it, cars, but right? it was just a video put out about the top 50 uh hip-hop beats of all time. And I think you came in at like 21, 22 for that five on it. Oh, definitely, nigga. You know what I mean? Niggas remix that boy? Man, come on, man. I just I posted that shit on my wall. And then I look, say, and look they didn't say that is say Club Nouveau. They said five on it. We did it they better than five Club on it. We did it better than Club Nouveau. So I tell you this. I tell you this much. A recent time. memory, and me, a recent memory. When they talk about lyricists on the West Coast, man, it was three. They mentioned. They mentioned Yuck, Exhibit, and Razzcast. You know what I'm saying? Now you can probably throw some other niggas up in there, but I'm just talking about before. Uh, I uh, forgot the cat, the youngster from uh, Compton. Uh, uh, the mainstream it's artists, hella, it's hella niggas, yeah, but, but 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 I'm just saying, but the, but the, but I'm niggas. saying, but but but, but them the top three names you hear though. I'm, just know that I'm a boy, man. Throw me up somewhere in there. I'm a boy. You, you got to. You got yeah. to. Boy, my nigga. Period. Like when when you say corrupt, you better say yuck too from up top. <coughs> up, yeah. yeah. Corrupt down south, you better say yuck up top. If you but, there's a song good. that you got yuck. I'm talking about lyrical gangster shit, not not backpack shit. Not hype beat shit, not dance shit. I'm talking about lyrical gangster shit. Nigga, you got in the bay, nigga. Me and Keith, nigga. Me and for real. You got. Nigga. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would throw Fab in there. I would throw definitely throw Fab in there. Definitely I'm as far as lyricists, lyrical but I'm talking, I'm talking. lyrical prowess, yeah. being lyrical a straight gangster. lyricist. And me lyrical and Goose was just gangster. talking about this the other day. It's not. I, I tell man, niggas man, if you want to know dancing, I said lyrical gangster shit, man. Give me your yeah, top five yeah. lyrical gangster rappers in Oakland, not the Bay in Oakland. Yeah, yeah I went to yo. I pulled out one of my old scars that still got CDs, and uh, one of your CDs was in my whip, right? Flossy, it's a Flossy, Mister Flossy. That song is hard as hell. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know, but hey, uh, <laughs> Mr. Frosty, when, it, when it comes Mr. to some when it comes to some Mr. lyrical Snowman. shit, I, I mean, think it's Kurt Kurt. Snowman. Hey, look, let me say this: I, I, when it when it comes to some lyrical I, shit, right? I get that nigga, down, nigga. That nigga, it's young, man. They came with no some man. of the hardest boy, motherfucking well, shit boy. that ever came out of California, out of out of hip hop. Period. It's something that I want everyone that's watching. I think it's called. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, that Albulation, that Albulation, man, is, 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 is that that Albulation, man, is is is, is up there. And like, I mean, like all eyes on me and probably ready to die is probably I would say it's two albums that probably top that. Man, I mean, I mean, or or in in you know, it's in that pantheon right there. I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't think of another nigga that did a, a double album that did better than that outside of maybe them two, out of them two. Hey, man. I appreciate that, bro. And then look, thugged out was supposed to be thugged out. It wasn't supposed to be the abolition. We was waiting for two years for CNH, and I kept recording. So you record for two years, you make a double album. We just put all that shit out, man. Period. We have more songs and shit that we put on the next album. Hey, hey, 
Hey, hey, hey, hey, hey, hey, hey, hey, Octavius Miller gonna kill us if we don't throw Sig in that lyrical gangster uh, uh, category, man, as far as town. It's a must. Oh, yeah. It's a It's a whole yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah the nigga yeah, just escaped from the rehab for the mentally disturbed. Run up them like McDonald's over 12 million niggas, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, see with the pipeliner to rap a lot, the West Coast line. He I just found Back. out that he got the niggas in LA sign He bought a uh, uh, Kenny King and Pop LQ, all them niggas to the table. He he, he bought them uh LA niggas to uh, rap a lot. So yeah, see him definitely, man. I, I understand a lot of story. Hey yo. I'ma say, I'ma say, you know, since nobody wanna say it. And I, and I got I got Micah Scar and Unique and goddamn uh 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 Oak Town motherfucking uh network in this bitch. Nobody said yeah. rap and run. Oh, I said uh, uh, Gooch, did I not say Ron? Hey, what we said the other day motherfucking Ron. It, it's no I way it's, it's, Ryan, it's, yeah. like 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 it's impossible, it? man, to have any list of any lyricists out the town and I have rap around. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like, like, the like, shop, my nigga. Uh, yeah, I'm there, but I'm just, yeah, period. Like, man, yeah. when I was trying to come up, yep, and Ron was like my study guides. I've said man. this before, like on on you know, social media and stuff like that. And like revelations to this day. I use that when I'm trying to, like, when I'm in my coach mode. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I man. use that to show show some young niggas, you know what I'm saying, a couple times. Like, but can you do this, though? Hey, yo. Hey, you, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know? hey look, let me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this, yo. When it comes to lyricists, it's a lot of different songs that we can pick from your solo shit as well as from your group shit. But the one that stood out to me, where any nigga that had an argument, the argument was killed. How many niggas you know that ever said, I can't stand punks on a manhunt to destroy, lay low, because my fofo will make your ass glow like Bruce Lee. Woo! <laughs> 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 yeah, I was done with it. I was done with it. <laughs> like this nigga cooking niggas. <laughs> yeah. Yo, hey, this ain't about me. This is about Pretty Black, man. God damn it. Oh, yeah. I appreciate the love, man. Yo, can y'all hear me? I want to show you what me and Faison be listening to. Hold on. Give me the screen real quick. Yes, sir. Here we go. <laughs> Rescue 911. Rescue 911. <laughs> wow. Me and Faye Nine going down the street. Shout out to my nigga Faye Nine. OPD. It's raining. It's pouring. Doing too far. No snoring. What y'all know about that? Man. Oh, man. Y'all done switched the game, man. I want to. Hey, we just talking about monumental shit, man. Hey, yo, that's good shit, my nigga. Because that's the end Pretty Black is involved in it. It's because, but think about it. We wouldn't be, we're talking about Pretty Black. And tipping on half of you because you had something to do with that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. That's my nigga. So it all runs. It, it all runs concurrent. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. I just didn't like when a nigga said the nigga was a robber. I don't like when the nigga said Mike was a uh, selling uh, uh <laughs> selling a uh, uh, fucking uh, uh fucking uh, uh audio equipment. <laughs> yeah, radios and shit. Mike was a big real estate investor, my nigga. That nigga ain't had no fucking audio equipment. Like, where was they shop at? I'll wait. Unique. Have you ever been to that radio <laughs> shop? No. no, before the Lambo and all this shit, Mike was in a fat ass motherfucking house. So all right. that shit. That the mini mansion was Mike House. Like, come on, oh. man. Let's stop playing, man. Mike was getting niggas cars before. Before nigga had the bitch get niggas car, Mike was getting niggas car. Period. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the bullshit, man. Mike was a big player, man, and gay to gay, man. Period, man. Behind the scenes, man. You know, he ain't no nigga. He wasn't no nigga like 
Should have said, you want a nigga in the video, all in the video, dancing. Mike was behind the scenes, man. And making sure his brother was right. Period. All them guys that flip cars got paper, a lot of them. Bro, you can't go and buy the cars this nigga had unless you had great credit. <laughs> you see the nigga, boy, you see the nigga added up a half a million dollars in cars in the parking lot. Let alone niggas do wells and shit. You want me to rewind it? And this no, nigga, was yeah, he probably was what, 23, 24 on that. He was okay. ass. With that shit, too, though. Yeah. He died at 25, my nigga. Whoop the whoop the wham. Yo, that's what you say. I've been trying to whoop the 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 the whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop the the whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop the Come on, bro. Thank you, my nigga. The wham, wham, and this MC to the MC. So, Goose, don't leave me alone, Goose. God damn it. <laughs> the wham cam with the, with the whoop, the wham. Hey, that's, you know hey, that's, hey, that's shit just depressing, man, because it just, it, like, you know what I mean? You know, Your pretty, right there, pretty, 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 so dope. pretty hold just on, remind on. me. I've been playing that shit about 10 times a day. Let, 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 let Michael Scarry land. I, I'm my saying, bad, my bad, my I'm, bad. I'm, Go ahead. No, it's good. I'm saying it's it's depressing, man, because you know what I mean. Look, man, you know, I mean, this nigga, the Jack. I mean, these these two arguably like some of the hardest niggas in recent memory to come out the out the yak. You know what I mean? That we that we lost. You know what I mean? We already lost C and rapping Ron. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, uh, and dangerous dame. I'm not. I'm just saying like these some iconic niggas, bro. Right? Like you can't replace these type of niggas, man. You know what I mean? Like it was, like it's a whole culture set around like. We talking about nowadays with niggas sounding like others, man. These the, the, these niggas represent the era where niggas was just raw in and of themselves, nigga. Like the mob figures, not one of them niggas sounded like the loonies, not one of them niggas sounded like the link was not one of them niggas sounded like. I mean, bad influence, not one of them niggas sounded like. I mean, niggas was just raw. It was just raw talent, my nigga. It's like. I mean, when we talk, I mean, I ain't even go outside the bay. I'm talking about inside the Oakland city walls, my nigga. I'm just saying, I mean, like this, you know, I know Jack represented Pittsburgh, but Jack was in the town a lot. You know what I mean? That's why I mentioned the Jack, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, like, you can't even replace this type of shit, nigga. Like, that shit just represents hey, the error, nigga. We, we got to give an honorable mention to Mr. Ill, too, man. Absolutely. Oh God, absolutely. Man. We gotta what? give a mention to Mr. Ill, man. Absolutely. That one eight hundred fed up with the bullshit. That that Shit. three hills of sugar. That oh, man. Mr. Ill, Scary X. Shit, the Rebirth man. album, Scary X, Brother X. Man, God damn. Man, man, it ain't nobody in the music industry that that is like a Scary X. Man, he's one of a kind. Oh, my nigga. No, I mean, you know, I know that Texas got the Black Man I, I album. I know Texas. I know Texas. I know Texas got K Reno, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean. But I mean, but I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean a, a Scary X man. I'm talking about that. that every time of Ricky Murdoch alone, man, it it it, it had niggas ever had niggas ready to go up and ever uh, ready to go up. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the dopest lyricist in the town that that influenced me and Numb, and we was like searching for niggas at at Skyline, like we had cut. Nigga, school and, and nigga catch the fifty one, nigga and go to skyline, nigga. The, the nigga, we going to skyline to hunt for these niggas. The hieroglyphics, that nigga, Ooh, had nigga. Plus the opio, oh, hard. Hard. them nigga was hard than a motherfucker. Uh, like uh, them niggas had the lyrical bar in the bay at that time. This is ninety three and chill, nigga. Nigga was still infinity, on nigga. Shit. Them niggas can't. Niggas going crazy. Niggas in the woods and shit. Man. Niggas in the front of the old schools, no shoes and bogues. Niggas in the woods and the jungle and the mountains and shit. Just killing it like 93 and 10. Like, God damn, who is these niggas? They killing it. They young niggas. So, so yuck, if you had not out of the bay, but just and, out of the town. And, and Dale the Funky Homo Sapien. That being mm -hmm. Dale, thank you. Thank get Dale, your lazy butt Dale, off my little, couch. 
Dale, Dale, let me tell y'all this. Dale wrote Once Upon a Time in the Projects for Ice Cube. I ended on that. And that's one of my favorite songs for Ice Cube. Dale the Funky Homo Sapien wrote that. Damn. Ask Ice Cube. That's some hip hop history right there. Once Upon a Time in the Projects, Dale wrote that? Come on, my nigga. Damn. You gotta get a base some love, my nigga. You gotta get over. Hey, yo, bitch, you better tell him something. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta get a hieroglyph and some love, my nigga. Hell yeah. And we forgot uh, about the, the one of the main you gotta major get a hieroglyph and some love, nigga. That was Dale wrote that, nigga. Hey, yo, uh-huh. and Goosey, all the panel right here. One love, first of all. I'm really not sure how this shit about to be sure. E40. What the? F- Come on. I'm talking about uh, some town shit. Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 another hey, another hey, special yeah. shout out. Another I'm special shout the, out to the uh, to the motherfucker. Shout out, shout out to the shout out to the water though. You know what I'm saying? That's I, that's below. That's below right there. Respectfully. That's below. Respectfully though. Being from LA, you know I don't know the, the, the dynamics of that. So nah, well, that whatever, we we explain it. Vallejo is a whole nother city inside. That's the northern bay right there. We in the east bay. We in Oakland. We in the city of Oakland. You know what I'm saying? The rappers we mentioning are specifically out of Oakland. You know, the, the bay got a lot of rappers. It's a lot of rappers that come right. out the bay. You know what I'm saying? We'd be on here talking for at least a couple of hours on that alone. You know what I'm saying? Why ain't nobody mentioned T Looney and Eclipse though? Hold on, man. Let, let's, get let's get to the Eclipse. Let's get to the Eclipse. Come on, man. Lord. And shout out my nigga, fucking Eric Carson, another Libra. You know. Hey, come on. My cousin Eclipse was a goddamn animal, nigga. T- that Louis. nigga was. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hey, oh. hey, I have Eric? a question for you, Nick. Yes. Do you mind? Sure. From a female's perspective. Who were your favorite? See, I the Bay Area, I just put it all up, up north, right? Mm-hmm. So I just nurse on the day. It was like a class. Who did you like from up, up north? From a female perspective? I mean, I liked them all for different things. You know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, we got to, I mean, shit. Ron, you ain't get no names said, out. Ron, Ron Give me some names, girl. Give me some names. Yuck was my favorite, right? But I say who? Rapper Ron and Yuck was always my favorite. Facts. Um, they just had, you know, this, well, not, well, have and had, right? Some kind of visual, magical shit, you know? If you was, if you was lucky enough to experience Ron in a freestyle, it was like, this nigga must see pictures in his head or something. Like, Ooh. how the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Um... <laughs> Oh, oh, 80 seconds. Them, so a lot yeah. of them was my homies, so I'm a little partial, you know. At the mini part, the Pete. Can you rhyme? Oh, right, y'all, I'm out. Hey, Pete's talking about these little California people, man. <laughs> God bless you. I can't do this. Look. Hey, All right, Goose. Goose, the, Goose the truth, man. Hey, Goose, I, nigga. I done made you, Goose mad again. You, you disrespecting the queen. I'm asking her no. She was Dude. in the paraphernalia the mob, nigga. Are you serious? This is our female rapper. Because she sounds like she know what the hell she's talking about. She was in the crew, nigga. <laughs> she was in the paraphernalia. I was outside. So, I mean, it's, it started with, you know, my circle first. And then everything after, that's cool, too. But, you know. Um, yeah, it, but it was, you know, I think, like, it was just so fun. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, especially, like, during that era, and I think that's what, like, the industry and also the bay is missing is just it was fun like niggas was talking gangster shit niggas was talking street shit but it was fun and it was colorful and everybody was like you know original with that shit and that Hell was important nah, stop sugar cold shit talk about the honeycomb talk about gub okay like you on some old like like you on shit 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 slow shit shit slow mo slow motion Oh, what was that shit called? Um, what was that shit the street called? You said what? What was the street called? Um, God damn it. Collins were it was a C. It was like some type of government. Some oh, C. God. But anyway. Anyway, we got, right. We got <laughs> I'm gonna break. Out, baby. Yes. 
with the studio and the, and the nigga, we rolling dice, hella shit, nigga. It's going mm-hmm. down. She right there with us, nigga. Like she with all this shit, nigga. The five footers came to our shit. So shout out, me. Shout out the conscious footers. daughters too, man. What was Straight your experience up. when the five footers came to the honeycomb? Man. See, y'all trying to rap against each other. See? She said, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> <laughs> but that was dope as fuck to me though. You know what I'm saying? At that time, like I was like, man. Yeah, I shit. Okay, you felt like how I was when, when niggas sick Ethan, yeah. Aunt Dilly and Rapper Ron on Yuck Mouth by itself <laughs> trying to rap against everybody. Nigga. I remember. Yeah, that nigga. Was like, big deal. <laughs> hey Yuck, you ever do you ever do you ever interview uh Aunt Dilly Dog uh, anytime recently? Nah, he said it didn't happen. This nigga went on some interview and said, hell no, nah, I wasn't even there. Like, bro, if you don't stop lying, my nigga. <laughs> uh, if you don't stop lying, my nigga. Too short said, <laughs> my group. Aunt Dilly Dog and, 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 and fucking rapper Brian. The, the, uh, the fucking uh, out of fluence. Because the whole play was teenagers trying to bring the niggas to, to bring us to Too Short. Once we came in the door, Too Short already had his young niggas. He had Aunt Dilly in them. Mm-hmm. And CNA and, and said, okay, well, let's have a rapper contest. Nigga, I, my niggas will gas your niggas. Not gas, but my niggas will rap your, I'll rap your niggas, man. We're going to bet for the, some pieces. CNA kicked the whole shit off. Like, nigga, my niggas will dust your niggas off. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm still ain't bust the rap still, nigga. It's just, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> See that oh, nigga in full throttle perm waving and shit. My niggas spit going everywhere. <laughs> my niggas are dust show niggas. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, yeah, I got my rap group. Bad influence. Let's go. Gotta buy the whole studio, motherfucker pieces, nigga. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Not knowing Numbs go ain't got no raps. <laughs> None. None at all. Drew down. We just meet this nigga at the studio. He's not rapping with us. That's Dude, the first time real. you met Drew? Yes, at the studio. First time I met Short, all these niggas. Ant Banks, everybody. First time I meet these niggas, I got to rap against niggas. And their studio, <laughs> West Oakland, nigga. So it's real, nigga. Nigga. Nigga, it's all the boss players. Nigga, Ted Bohannon, Ali, Superside. Nigga, all the boss yeah. ballers. Nigga, like the ballers. The, the, and it's all the rapper niggas in there, too. I ain't going to say the rappers. But I didn't say the ice cream man. The reason why I didn't say the ice cream man, because Seagram, rest in peace, tried to buy the ice cream man like two weeks prior for $1,000. Mm. Nigga, I'm on the block. I got $1,000 in my pocket. When he tried to buy it, I was like, ah, I got to hold on to this song. Because I was mm. saying much in the hood that niggas knew it word for word. So they said it to the nigga. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, shit. The nigga called me on my landmine at the house. This is when a nigga called you on the, on the rotary phone. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma house. <laughs> First time I ever talked to see him. Yeah, this C. What's up, C? Nigga? What's happening? What's up, JJ? You got this song, Ice Cream Man? I'm like, yeah, my nigga. You like, yeah, let me buy that bitch for a thousand. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crazy. So, boom, more of the story. Fast forward in time. I knew I had a jewel, especially after I just turned the dope deal into a motherfucking record deal with that same song. I said the Ice Cream Man to CNH while me and them trying to, you know, re-up in a drought. I turned the motherfucking dope deal into a record deal. With the, with the Ice Cream Man song. So boom, we get to the studio and we rapping and shit. And I'm saying all my writings and shit. Ron going off. I killed Eclipse. I killed Dilly. They out of here. They out of here. Dilly and Eclipse, they out of here. It's just me and Ron going. Ron is freestyling. I'm saying writings. So I don't say the Ice Cream Man because I'm holding it on. Like, nah, if I say it, they're going to bite it. So I'm saying all the writings I ever wrote, like, nah, I got it. Ron going off the head, nigga. This is the off the dome, no Frank Ocean, off the freestyle. Freestyle, freestyle king, nigga. <laughs> Another Libra. This on. nigga is rapping about every nigga, what every nigga got on in the motherfucking studio, 
Hey, you got the polo on with the hat on. You got the shirt on. <laughs> 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 so for every nigga in the studio, right? The bed, I told y'all, right? The bed is about some goddamn people, right? The yuck mouth, man. Go on and roll some recent reefer. And seeing that you lost, go and order the motherfucking pieces. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my. <laughs> that was about the goddamn pieces, man. And Who said Ron that? Said, Ron said that. That's nigga. Ron, oh man. God, Rapper Ron said that. <laughs> nigga, kill me, nigga. I lost. I lost the battle, nigga. In front of too short, everybody <laughs> got murdered, nigga. So Rapper Ron definitely. <laughs> Hey, but if you go, if you gotta I lose mean, to anybody, uh, nigga, you lose, you lose it to the best, nigga. <laughs> no, no, let me, let me land, let me land, let me land. Oh my god, this is the perfect story where you never underestimate your enemy and never judge a book by its cover. Me, rapper Ron, and None went to junior high school together, uh -huh. Westlake Junior High. None was the nigga rapping circles around niggas. Ron was skibbly doobly. I was skibbly doing. We wasn't no high class rap niggas back then. We wasn't the niggas. None was a nigga. Nigga, right. same school. Nigga, the Who Riders went there. Pop Black and Mr. Taylor. None was right. the circles around all of us. Nigga, rapping rhyme was not a threat. So when I seen the nigga at the studio, I'm like, ah, not that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn. No disrespect, no disrespect to Ron, man. But Ron was flunking like a motherfucker, man. Ron was supposed to be in the twelfth grade when we was in the ninth grade. Ron was, Ron, I won't give it a buck. Ron no. flunked like about three times. Nigga, he's supposed to be in gold. Nigga, this nigga's been small kept bus. The hell back. <laughs> so, he was a small bus. So nigga was a clown and Ron. Like nigga, you got held back three times. Nigga, you can't rap all that good. So when I see the nigga, I'm like, oh, that's a funky nigga. And he can't rap. I got this nigga. Lo and behold, mm. this nigga, boy, nigga rapping his ass off, nigga. I got <laughs> I mean, you can't, boy, you can't judge a nigga. I can't, because the nigga flunked and the nigga went rapping to the back then. Boy, he's a whole new nigga now, nigga. Hey, hey, Mr. Miller, <laughs> hey, hey Mr. Miller said, see, uh, nigga, see, boy. see. Uh, Mr. Miller says C was right. Uh, was was ghost writing for Scarface too? Yeah, I, I can believe that. I can believe. It. I don't know. I legend. I legend. I mean, that that song actually speaks louder than words. Like, like Face got bars. I don't think that nobody was right. I think niggas could like collaborate on certain shit. But Face was Face, nigga. I'd have been in the studio with Face, nigga. Face do Face, my nigga. He don't need no help. Right. Period. But like far as a concept, you know, face will get a concept from a nigga. You know what I mean? You could tell a nigga like a prison story or something or something that happened on the block and face could really write that out. You know what I mean? And make it a movie. That's what I know. But far as writing for face, I don't, I don't know, man. That's the negative. I don't know. Hey, Nick, let me ask you a question, sis, if you don't mind. Um, so if you had to pick just on some on some town shit, what would be your top five albums of all time from the town? Ooh. Me? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Nick, are you about on, to, You're about to make a lot of niggas mad. Unique, you go yeah. first. I don't even know about <laughs> that. Strictly from the it. town, any era, any time. I'm not doing this I, one, nigga. I feel you. Battling myself over Operation Stack on the Lunatic Music, man. But um, definitely, uh, I don't know. Like that's, I don't have a top five. I got a top. My, what, what, this, what, what, this is, this is mine. This is mine right here. Um, hey, nigga, oh, no. you get all the all the arrows and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 he go mine right here. Mine, mine thugged out the ambulation. The delinquents mm -hmm. bosses will be bosses. Drew down explicit game. Mm -hmm. Um um uh, um operation operation stackola stackola of course yeah um um damn it's, 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 it's one more it's at the tip of my fucking tongue I can't I already know um, uh, uh, stacking chips uh, 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 oh yeah yeah yes uh stacking chips but damn fuck you said top five though I I, I you get an honorable that. mention you can get an honorable mention um <laughs> we, uh, shit uh we we, we, we uh, What's the the the, the album? The one uh now fuck 
because oh, I, 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 I went you going into my list. <laughs> I, I, no, no, because I yeah, because I went to I went to Radio Shack right now on Telegraph and bought that motherfucking album. I, in fact, I bought that in in Bad Influence, man. Uh, 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 which which is the two albums that my next. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. That my well, that's my top seven right there. I, I gotta go. Number one, I gotta go. Message to the Black Man, Scary X. Reality yeah. Check, Seagram. I gotta go. Stacking Chips. I gotta go. God damn, I'm with you, Nick. Sis, God damn, it's it's Hell a fight God. between that Stack Ola and that motherfucking Lunatic Music. Ugh. I'm I'm gonna go Lunatic Music. And number five, damn, it's it's a fight between Born the Mac and, and the Big Badass, but I gotta go with the Big Badass. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't said no Machiavelli now. You ain't said no Mac Dre, y'all boy, y'all missed the no shit. Machiavelli to die. No, Mac Dre not from Oakland. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm gonna get Machiavelli an honorable hey, mention, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna say, if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna get Machiavelli an honorable mention, and the reason why I give him because he said if there's any place in the world he will claim it's gonna be Oakland, so I'm gonna throw him in the Oakland category, right? Because he ripped the town, right? You know what I'm saying? We gonna throw Shoulder in there. We gotta throw Tupac in there. You know what I'm saying? Right? So. I'm gonna have to throw to uh to Apocalypse now up in there because he wrote that album while he was living in the town. Right. Wow. Right. Unique, what's your shit? Oh my god, all of them. I gotta I, I gotta say money yeah. be talking dirty album because I was on that motherfucker. Ooh. Gotta say gotta say um gotta yeah. say cell block. Ooh. Cell block. Um and and what's the one Vaughn put out? Uh, Cell block was uh, nasty. The one with, uh, what's that one bomb put out? What the fuck was that shit that with that had uh that three times and uh that blow out your motherfucking brains? What the fuck was that album? Oh my god, I can't think of lock and load. Lock and load. Lock and load. Oh, lock and load. Lock and load. Lock and, mm -hmm. there. and then um the dope game album. Off oh, top. Um. Mm. You know, any shit, wow. anything, loony, stacking chips. Um, yeah, homegirl, yeah, it's every, lyricist. Uh, everything, Tupac. <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, let's and, just ball all know, that up. <laughs> and I, I got I two. a lot of, like, the old shit. Like, I, I you know, J-Dub had a, had a... Uh, oh, man. But they know, from Fresno, they from Fresno, though. Okay. No, but it was Fresno. like... Get your paper, whatever that was called. But that that that, that was a town that classic was, that was though. Town. That was that was a town like, classic. Like, man. We made a town shit. Yeah, yeah. There were so many groups that came out the town from Action yeah. Pack, Gangsta Gangsters, TV. the Black Dynasty, TV, God, Black yeah. Dynasty, yep. Yeah. I gotta I gotta throw I gotta I gotta oh, throw I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta throw event event to Ricky Murdoch and that motherfucker in Real Talk Two Thousand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We said, hold on, we said everybody but Richie Rich in the four one five man. Y'all ain't gonna disrespect my nigga Rich like that. Rich, don't do it. Five it, man. Four one five it, man. Yeah, shout out DJ Zero Cypress Village, man. Like that, nigga. Richie Rich is one of the top spitters in the Bay, nigga, in Oakland, nigga. Period. But yeah, you, told us, no name, you, you told us the name. You told us the name. Hey, you said top five, man. I mean, if I, if we if our list was at last extend longer, I mean, all of, trust me, oh, I can yeah. find all them come names, in. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's too many niggas to name yeah, five, man. Like, it's hard for me. <laughs> like, you know, be the weeder, motherfucker. Come on, Ooh, be the weeder, another young guy. Ooh. Nigga, okay. yeah, be the weeder guy, gas guy. Niggas gotta get right. beat the weeder. That nigga nasty, boy. That nigga is all gas, no brakes. I, 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 I gotta get fat. I gotta get fab his roses, man. Cause this nigga one right. only one of one one of only niggas I know. My nigga that's killing that nigga on the underground and on the battle rap scene. You know, that nigga's a boy, nigga on that battle rap shit. Yeah, that one of them dudes, boy, nigga. Period. Fab is a boy, period. That nigga's a boy, boy, nigga. That's that's it, right? That family. That nigga, that okay. nigga that wrote the biggest songs for niggas and did the biggest shit for us himself, nigga, and freestyling and entrepreneurial shit. So Fab is definitely a fixture and a factor, a factor. Period. In the period. 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 Can I land? 
It's been a lot of greats, man, that came up out of that hey, town. Talk your, hey, talk your shit, uh, Jack Daniels. <laughs> Young Gully is up as fuck. You guys almost took all my people. Oh, Asani Goldie, damn. You they almost took all that people. Everyone, uh, Ooh, I man. know what's wrong. Richie Rich, right? That's your number one. That is my number one. That's one of my favorite songs. I'm not going to go because you guys are up from your area. I'm going to go Bay Area. Do you mind that? Go ahead. Do your thing. Do your thing. Fody, Mac Dre, Pac, uh, <laughs> Richie Rich, and then what is that girl group? You already said five, bro. You done. <laughs> you done. <laughs> yeah. What's that the girl group? ready to say info. <laughs> which one? <laughs> which, which which one? The several of them. The several of them. Marvelous. B and G B. And then <laughs> Oak Town three five. Okay. <laughs> Stop it, right at you. And then oh, oh, kind of there was a girl group kind of that was daughters. hard though. They were gangsters. Oh. Uh, I was going to say Daughters. Conscious Daughters. Gotta, yeah. gotta be Conscious Daughters. Oh, man. Hey, yeah. Funk, whatever yeah. happened to Passion? Y'all yeah. remember Passion? Female yeah. Funk, too. Rest in peace, a special one. Yeah. Yeah. Special. Yeah. Definitely. That was my nigga, man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, how many of y'all missed the compilations, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I know that West Coast Bad Boy was just an absolute classic all time, though. But them Herm Lou used to kill it, though. We mm. need, I don't know. We, I mean, that's the, I mean, that's that's what brought the Bay together. Like, now I'm talking about nigga, that shit had the Bay together, nigga. Soundtracks as well, nigga. shit. Yeah. I don't think it was a bigger LA Bay connection as far as soundtracks go than that motherfucking Minister to Society soundtrack. Oh yeah, right. well, I, I, that puts spice everybody on, nigga. The whole men's yeah. society, period. Men's society, period. They had niggas acting in that motherfucker. Too short. Everybody was in that motherfucker. Hell really? uh, yeah. Right. And let me clarify something. This. What's that? Well, I'm not gonna show the bottle anymore. <laughs> Man, I gotta, shot, I gotta get spice some love too, man. I know Hayward. I mean, he the rawest hey, nigga to come out of Hayward, man. Oh my the hardest nigga to come out of Hayward, man. We can't, we can't leave spice we out. We forgot. He, he honorable town mentioned. He honorable town God, business, God, man. Is on yeah. dope if you don't mention spice, because he came up through fucking with shorting them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Job, all that shit. That one, that that one, that 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 that, that spice one. That for man, that, that was nigga. Whew. Now and let's go. He created his own style. Now, 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 now we gonna get on. Now you ain't so drunk after all, cause you gave a perfect alley oop for all of us. Okay. What's our top five Bay Area, like the whole Yay area, nigga? Not just Oakland. Ugh. Now niggas can talk they real shit. Ugh. It's gonna be difficult. Um, 1993, 1994. Can I just say that? <laughs> RBL, RBL Posse, RBL Posse, RBL Posse, 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 Messi Mauer. I mean, really, I mean, see, any of his, uh, any of his, uh, yeah, I mean. You said RBL Posse, uh, uh, Rufus by law. I can name a couple of most small albums. I got you. Um, um, um that 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 mailman was that mailman was the shit to me, man. I was off that. that oh boy. yeah, the EP. Uh -huh. uh, Who was mailman? Forty. Uh, e Forty had an EP. E Forty. <laughs> okay, I got everything forty. Hold on, man. Let niggas that, that, make that shit. That rap, uh, uh, Max Max Ray rapper gone bad. Mm. Talk your shit. Master P, 99 Ways to Die. Man, if you ever say that shit again, bro. I can't believe you. <laughs> boy, what the fuck is that, fuck? Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 nigga, that, hey, hey, nigga, that, hey, 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 keep it up. Hey, 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 you know what, hey, you know what, though? Hey, hey, I, I get it, I, I get it, though. I get it, though. I'm on, I'm on Yuck My Stage, though. I can't believe really, 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 Hold on. The nigga was in a relay race, man. Almost one nigga in this field. Fuck that nigga. 
hey, you know, hey, you know why I thought of, you know why I thought of that album though? Cause Unique I, said, "Well, not she, she, she mentioned that ninety two, ninety three era though." That like, I nigga, when I was coming up, you don't know that nothing, motherfucker nothing, was coming no. up. It, it, look, they hang up on me all the time. Hang this nigga up. <laughs> you the name the four or five album. You the name the pool man, pool man album. Fuck with dank. Mm-hmm. You the name the motherfucking uh, uh, Father Dime album. Damn. We still in you Damn. still in Oakland. You said the Bay Area, my nigga. You it's said you, you, you we okay. should, that's Oakland. Yeah, I mean, of course, I can name I can name all of them. Yeah, yeah, I came up of all of them. Yeah. You said Bay Area as a whole. I just, I just, I just try to, I, I try to get, I try to go out. I try to, I try to sprinkle it. I try to sprinkle all the cities in the in the Bay that I remember though. This coming up. I'm gonna take him off, man. Let us talk. About <laughs> <laughs> I try to sprinkle. Bro, Wilder, man. Hell yeah. Hold on, man. Let it, let everybody land. I'm gonna type you back in, bro. Let everybody land because you want to talk over everybody. But I'm talking to it's me, bro. I'm talking to Killer. Talk y'all shit. Go ahead, sis. You said illegal business. Um, yeah, Mac Mall, illegal business. Shout out, Kyrie. Damn, I was talking about that gas chamber in there. See, bro. Today, but that was like. I mean, I guess we can be inclusive. Can we? Do you want to just say Northern Cali, or <laughs> we gonna keep it strictly Bay? We got to go northern, then fuck it, man. We got the nigga saying Sebo and shit, man. We got to like, like It's no way. It's no way to leave Bo out of it, though, man. Right. Not, like, it's like, no, it's no way. I think Bo is one of ours. Like, I don't, man, he from SAC, but he, he from the Bay, too. Cause the Bay I know that. I know that our Topsy album cover was made at my cousin Paul Fuller's funeral home, though, in the East, though. I know that. I know that's what his album cover Everything, Jacker. Shit, that birds in the kitchen, kitchen was done right was across the street. Mm-hmm. Cypress. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was in the West. Yeah. yeah. And their yeah. office was in East Oakland. I mean, down there, San, Le- San Leandro, right across the street from Fat. I mean, uh, Ben's Burger. Mm-hmm. I want to throw Killer Tay in there, but again, that's Fresno, right? I mean, Killer Tay basically, he basically up north. I mean, it's like yeah. depending on like some of them niggas claim up north, some niggas claim down south. Like Central California is like a mixed box, right? I'm saying, hey man, depending on who you ask, we, we doing all that, man. We got to throw my nigga, motherfucking <laughs> brother Lynch, huh? Absolutely, brother Lynch. Oh my briefcase, oh, yes, we, we got to throw him in this. We got to throw him in this. Ready up in there. Gain a hoe, nigga. That's my nigga. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta oh, throw man. him in the age radio. Okay. Okay, so you, you got Killer Tay with the Mr. Mafioso album. What album? Man, I was on Mr. that Mafioso one. Mafioso for sure. Looking like make Definitely sure you Mr. play uh, Black Monsters. Next Fast. Listen to it. Um, hey, fuck that messy Marv, nigga. Everybody said messy everybody but messy Marv. Marv I know, like, no, I, I, I said messy Marv. That's the third artist I mentioned. Yep, yeah, okay. a scary mentioned. My bad. Scary X. Facts. Hey, that was oh, my top seven. One nigga y'all ain't missing. One nigga y'all missing from the old school. Cool nuts. Cool nuts. Shout out, Cougar, man. Cool nigga. Shut out, cool, man. Nigga, what was that shit called, man? That's scandalous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking out Larry's full ramen fairy. What that nigga say? What that nigga say? You fuck my bitch. Let it be the reason. Let that be the reason. Yeah, that nigga there. Shut up, my nigga Cougar, man. Man, Cougar, nigga, come on, man. That was my god, guy, my love. Shout out, to, shout out to Totally Insane too, man. And the yeah. man, the Jacker boy, that nigga's an animal. Mm-hmm. Man, man, Jack, shit, you see my avatar, man. I'm here to say this, man. Against that ninety fourth and Jack, man. <laughs> Jacket was one of the dopest ever from from up top. Hey, I want to, hey, I want to name one of the hardest niggas that come up under Jack, though, man. Rest in peace to my nigga Street Knowledge, man. You know street what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, bro. bro, yeah, 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 bro, 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 was with us every day on Clubhouse, my nigga. Like the night he died, my nigga, like we, you know, man, rest, man, that shit hurt us, man. You know what I mean? 
know. Shout out to my brother Gambler, man. But uh, you know I mean, with street knowledge, that nigga was the, that nigga was the boy, man. He used to talk. That nigga was a real that that nigga is a lyricist right there, man. We gonna talk about street stuff. knowledge, dope as fuck, nigga. Dope as shit, nigga. Rest in peace, the boy, boy, man. Like, come on, that whole like Jack, a whole little uh, uh, artist, the artist, uh, Jack artist shit, man. Them niggas was dope, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Jack yeah. was fucking with Freeway, man, over there in Philly and shit. They had the albums together. Jack was Definitely. making five moves, my nigga. Like we done lost some real ones, like some 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 dudes that could have connected to the fucking dots, my nigga. Mac Drake could could have connected the dots. Like we wondering why the base stuck in its own capsule, my nigga. Like it's certain niggas that died that could have connected the fucking dots. Pop could have connected the dots. Shock G from Digital Underground and could have connected the dots, my nigga. Like. It's niggas that could have really connected the dots that the big boys that's gone, my nigga. And that, you, know, you got the independent niggas that got to, you know, strive for they self. But it was niggas like Shock, niggas like motherfucking um, 40 and them. Everybody that helped us, you know what I mean? Like, helped it. Like, you ain't got nobody to help you right now. You got to do it by yourself, my nigga. So, you know, them them, them OGs, man, them, them legends, man, that, that that was in the game, you know what I mean? That, that gave you that out of youth. It's gone. So, hey, you know what's crazy, Yuck? The other day I was just talking to my partner, man, about nigga, do you know what the motherfucking internet would have been like if Dre would have still been alive on Instagram, nigga? If that nigga would have been around when Instagram was around, god damn. <laughs> Dre would have had this motherfucker shaking. Yo, what the fuck? When he died, he had a uh, uh, fucking... Um, when they were doing the flavor of love, they were trying to do all that dating shit with him. He was out here in LA making plays and shit. Like literally before he died, my nigga. He was about to get lined up. And the nigga had um a $3.5 million deal on the table with uh, Atlantic Records. You know what I mean? Period. That's when Fab got signed when he died. So he had, he had some big plays on the table, my nigga, before he died. Literally. Shout out Furl, man. Mm -hmm. Like I go a long way back with him, man. Like my grandmother, man, rest in peace and God rest her soul, stay right on 525 Mark Avenue, right in the crest. I'm talking about since 71 before I even got here. So I've been knowing Dre like back from the demo tape days, you know what I'm saying? When, when she, man, just, it, it was sad. That broke my heart right there. It seemed like it seemed like outside of Shoten Fody, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, throw JT the bigger figure in there too, his mother was right. Zoda Roaster, rest in peace, the big bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Um, it's like Mac Dre, Jacka, you know what I'm saying? You know, like cats like, man, it's like these niggas died before, like, these, right when they was about to blow. I'm talking about this. Mm -hmm. Really just, really just fuck over the game. And like the hyphy movement, and I be telling niggas, man, hyphy's old, nigga. We was saying, nigga, get hyphy. We get, don't make me get hyphy on you. Way back in Unit Four in the hall, nigga. We been saying right. that. Right <laughs> now, I'm talking about the, I'm, I'm talking about the movement, my nigga. I'm talking about nigga that had everybody paying attention to the bait, nigga. All these oh, niggas, yeah. this all, well, all this swagger jacking niggas come out with. Afterwards, nigga, I'm talking about with nothing, with nothing touching it because our whole region was behind it. Like the Bay is an exclusive region, period. You know what I mean? Like we always, we've always had our own, period. We always had our own. You know what I mean? You know? And it's and it's been always been inconquerable. You know what I mean? You know when the equipment and blood and all that shit went all over the world. Shout out to my grips and my dimos and who was etc. But the Bay wouldn't have any. You know what I'm saying? It's the oh, home of Panthers. I want five Kumi BGF. You know what I'm saying? All that. You know what I mean? It's like we 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 are, you know, stubbornly on, of our own. Like you can't. We, we really ain't listening, nigga. <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what I mean? So it's like when niggas pop out here and being that we we're on our own like that. When niggas pop, we show our ass to the world and they pay attention, man. You know what I mean? These niggas, these these this ain't no small. Like I can't think of nobody really else that that 
was able to get the kind of, you know, if you know how them Philly niggas is, them Philly niggas is kind of like us, man. They exclusive to their own. The fact that Jacket would be able to collab with Freeway, and I know it was on some Islamic, but I mean, it's a lot of Muslim rappers, you know what I'm saying? You know, Scar X, damn show sure could have did it, you know what I'm saying? But the Jack, but the Jack was about to take it to a whole nother level, though. You know what I mean? And Did him and the story government. have anything together, Jack? In the story, I, I, I don't shit. I, I mean, as much as niggas be collabing on behind the scenes, shit, I wouldn't be surprised if something came. Out. Nick, you ever heard anything with them together? You gotta ask, you gotta ask Hustler. Right? You gotta ask. You, you know the nigga that asked that question too, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe would know the answer to that. Okay. <laughs> if anybody would know the answer to that, is Rob Lowe. So I don't want to say yeah or nay. Right. Right. Man, I got this, my my top date albums of all time. I gotta go, man. Um, I gotta go down and dirty by the click. That was a monumental album. I gotta go. Uh, oh wait, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to go. Uh, Can you feel me by Drew Down? Monumental album. I gotta go forward. Let's see, I'm just, I'm trying to get out the town. <laughs> I'm trying to get out the town. <laughs> it's, gonna it's, be hard, hard. it's gonna be hard for us town niggas based on what yeah. we come up around. Yeah. Now. Like, like it wasn't nothing, like nothing in the bay was fucking with it. Like when all this shit was out, nigga. You know how much shit was out, nigga, at that time, nigga. We had all the show shit. We had the loonies. We had the linkers can was coming out. We had bad influence. You know I'm, I'm talking about we had a plethora of shit that was hitting our ears. We didn't even have to go outside our city. You know right, I, I think I'm gonna follow Scary on this one, and I'm gonna go with the uh, Ruthless by Law album. Classic number number four. I I probably have to say um, if we're gonna throw Bo in there, then I I got to go till my casket drops. That was one of the hardest fucking albums he ever dropped to me. That in the middle state. You feel me? And five to wrap, wrap it up. Ugh. God damn, I got bad influence. Let me do my top five, man. Without mentioning me or the loonies. Um, first one, uh, Hammer No Hurdle. MC mm. Hammer, whatever his first album was that did the 50 million. Um, uh, uh, show dog in the house. Two short album with the Ice Cube on it, with the motherfucking artwork yeah, yeah. on it. That's my favorite two short album ever. Man, um, Mac Dre, There's at Washington. Um, Tupac, All Eyes on Me. I got one more. Um, E forty. E forty. Um. My favorite 40 album got to be the one with Keek on it, man. The one with Tell Me When to Go. What's the name of that album? What's up, my Get a Report Card? Get a Report yeah. Card, man. Get a Report Card. They're my, my top. Him and Keek did a lot of work together. that. If it's major, hit me on my yeah, page. An honorable, honorable mention, man. Motherfucking uh, the two. I like stacking chips, but that three times crazy 2001, Ooh, whatever. That, that, that real talk 2000, the Ooh, one you was on. Real talk 2001. Oh, real talk 2000. Yeah, real talk 2000. Real talk 2000 was an animal, my nigga. And yeah, another, yeah. Man, what, what I really wanted to put in there was Gas Chamber by Sebo, man. That's number mm -hmm. five, man. You know what I mean? Uh, instead, of the C, uh, instead of the E41, Gas Chamber, man. That shit. Change shit in Oakland, my nigga. Man, nigga, I sound like a motherfucker to that shit, boy. Man, that music was so dark, nigga. That that oh, Mike Mosley and Sam Bostic, nigga, like the clouds just mind. covered up the moon, nigga. <laughs> that was just pure hustle mob music, my nigga. Period. I, right? I, I, I top see in uh, I top see to my casket dropping in the middle stage. My three favorite Bo album. Uh, all the motherfuckers are. All yeah. of them. What I was saying, with like them, 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 my. If I had to pick a top three, them my favorites right there. All of them. And the 
And then if I got to go honorable mention, man, I got to go to Messy Marv album when he was standing in front of Jug Liquor in West Oakland. What was the name of that album? Oh, you hit him, hit him hard. Was it Bandanas and no? Bandanas, Tattoos and Sunrise? Is that that album where he had to he had the little he had the little team with him in the parking lot? Yep, I think that's it, man. That's that whole time ring with Tycoon and then all that shit. That was a good album. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying shout out to my motherfucking brother from my hood. Talking about the one who had, had sh- that album that had Sugar Free on it. Did it have Free on there? I don't know if it had Free on there. That's the one that had Keisha Cole on it, right? Yeah, uh, well, leave yeah. him the hole. Shout out to my motherfucking little brother, man, Jay Stalin, man, from Cypress, man. Hey, man, we got to get it all to fucking uh, the whole motherfucking uh, live wire. They got all them niggas put up, man. Facts. I don't know Shout why. Out Eddie like, Day. The whole team, man. The whole Shout live wire. My little, my, little, my little brother, Tommy P, man. Team 400 slash nine live wire, man. Mm-hmm. Sal Filthy, man. Filthy make the bay look good, my nigga. Sal Filthy, my nigga. FOD, man. Them niggas make the bay look good, my nigga. Them niggas is doing it. Period. Man. Hey, hey, I just want to say this, right? I just want to, because cause people might be wondering, like, how do we segue from, from pretty to, you know what I mean, to this. Hey, the, re- the, this, the reason why I feel like this is important is because, like, we, pretty was a dope ass artist man and he just represents some of the hardest motherfuckers that come from out of out of our region you know what i mean and like it's like we don't openly give enough homage to motherfuckers all the time man like we just we just just crossed like about 40 years of th- at least 35 years of rap right now you know what i'm saying just all time throughout the bay that you don't even know you got one of the bay areas icons on stage and you hearing like shit that that moved him like what moved all of us my nigga that shit is important you know what i'm saying because really though you know what i mean like i said earlier like the bay we exclusive man you know what i'm saying it's like nigga we ain't no mainstream place you know what i'm saying like you know it's underground you know home of the independent artists and like nigga when you had them West Coast bad boy and the harm blue compilations and all that that was coming out, nigga. You showcased everybody from the bay on oh, motherfuckers, though. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I mean, it's it's a beautiful discussion, man. But look, 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 that was a, not to cut you off, Calico, not to cut you off, Scar. The perfect alley you, man. The chat saying, man, we got producers too. Who's the top five producers from the bay, man? I heard niggas saying, man, man, all type of shit. And Banks, I'm, Kyrie, Droopy, and Rick Rock is mine. Talk about top five, man. Niggas got to do a top oh. five. Oh, top five. Yeah, top Zoopy, five. Droopy, Rick Rock, Tom Capone, uh, and Banks. Um, JT, the bigger figure. I'll give my top five, man. Tom Capone, definitely because he made five on it, man. Rick Rock. Um, motherfucking um, mechanics. There you go. Damn, I left for not mechanic. Oh, I'm out of pocket. <laughs> and um, and what's my nigga? EAC and one more nigga, man. Hold on, man. I said Aunt Bay. It's one more nigga that I'm missing, man. That that kill shit. <laughs> Oh man, fuck it, man. I gotta I gotta give it out to my nigga Raphael Sadiq because he be co-producing on a lot of shit. Facts. Shit, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Tom Capone, the mechanics, Mike D and Sonny B. I mean no, and B Bumble. And Mike Mosley. Mike Mosley, I forgot about Mike. God damn. Um, okay. Oh, I'm missing somebody. They said tracks a million, DJ Fresh. No, 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 don't mention it, don't mention it, don't mention it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I cut the comments off. I don't even want to look. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta do tracks a million for sure. And then um 
Sam Bostic. Mm. Sam Bostic, that's the nigga that put the whole funk down for 48 body, nigga. He gave it, he gave the game to uh, Mike Mosley. I gotta go. Tom Capone ain't no different. Definitely gotta send a shout out to motherfucking um Kenny Tweet and Four Racks, man, the mechanics, man. Mechanics. Uh, I gotta go Kyrie and Banks. And I, I gotta squeeze some Cypress Village in there some way, man. DJ Daryl. Oh man, niggas forgot about DJ Daryl, man. <laughs> DJ Daryl in there. Honorable mention of Brother yeah. Broski. Oh, Mr. Miller said, Mr. Mr. Hey, Mr. Hey, Miller hey, said, hey, hey, let me let me let me get the screen. You know who's our ahead. top you know who's our top producer that we forget? DJ mm. Mustard. <laughs> DJ Mustard stole all our shit. Hey, Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller threw two up in there. He said Trey White and Felton Pilot. Hey, I seen a nigga say Sean T. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. That's a good one, nigga. Studio Tone. Yep, yep. Yeah, Furlock. Yeah, nigga. One drop Scott. Mm-hmm. Niggas forgot about one drop. He was all oh, over. Come yeah, on, man. Nice. Him and Tom Capone, nigga. Like one drop, nigga. Oh. Hey, niggas, we got some niggas, hey, man. Hey, we had some boys from all our <laughs> Yeah, we had some boys, nigga. Nigga. Oh Lord, man. Shout out Rick Rock too, man. I just it was so many, bro. So many. They say Fab got beat up. Fuck out of here, man. Oh, man, you know what? I got to give us honorable mention, too, to another good, great, a great Bay Area producer as well, man. Shout out Kenny motherfucking Lou. K. Lou, man. Yeah, they said K. Lou, oh, yeah. yeah. They said K. Lou. Good shout out, bro. Good motherfucking shout out, man. But uh, man. the legendary niggas, man, nigga. Boy, Aunt Banks, all them niggas, boy. Who made who made hammer beats? Uh, well, I know his DJ was what was his name? Uh, DJ Long Mixer and DJ uh, Rodin. He had two D. This nigga had two DJs. Yeah, that nigga and, and fifty dancers. <laughs> fifty dancers. <laughs> hammer came to kill him, boy. Yeah, he said uh, the top that hammer shit was, was slapping though. He He's said DJ name, DJ name was TC the Enhancer. Was that the chat going crazy? Who, who did the production for, for the hieroglyphics? Oh, good, good shit. I think they were self-produced. I think individuals in, in the mob. Like, it's not the house, huh? I think, um, what's the nigga named Domino? I, they DJ. I think Domino did it. Mm. Did the piece. But when I was around them, I lived with A-plus. When I was around them, all them niggas was producing. A-plus, all them niggas was producing. And nigga, Pap, okay. nigga, Pep, all them niggas was producing. Niggas I think Mr. I think Octavius Miller said Felton Pilot is uh was one of uh, Hammer's uh uh producers. Oh, Octavius and his motherfucker man, where Octavius at man? No, nah, no, nah, nah, you know he texting me. He te- he he text he, te- he text my line right now. He look no. he watch he watching the thing though, so he in there somewhere. I'm just gonna tell you, all them hieroglyphic niggas can produce. When I was around them niggas, all them niggas, but I don't know who made the beat. <laughs> all them hey, yeah, you, as far as some young, as far as some young and fresh talent, man, that's coming up out of the West Coast, man. Are you up on a uh, Razcast Sons? Uh, what's the Coast God, Coast Country? Coast Country. They just dropped a new video, man. Yo, yo, that's that's my that's who I like. That's that's my number Ooh. one. Ooh, about the outside, right now. Ooh, them, young them young boys cooking, young boy. To be fucked with. Them young niggas cooking, boy. Them young niggas it remind me of the golden era, our era. Yeah. Like, on steroids. Them niggas yeah. got our blueprint and said, okay, this is how we're going to do it right now. 
Yeah. One nigga rapping in all types of Spanish and shit, and then he go back yeah. to rap. Nigga, and then one nigga rap like Busta Rhymes, die, die, die. Nigga, this go crazy, nigga. Them niggas is lit. I fuck with them a long way, man. Yes, yeah, this is man. nice, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ass, nice. Nigga, that's my nigga. I tell this nigga about his son. I said, your son's got it done, nigga. Woo! <laughs> Them niggas, I think they gonna fuck off brass cats right now. Nah, nah, brass cats is an animal. He, he he gonna run. He go, they they gonna run him. They gonna run him. But I think that's pop. Right, gonna take all four of them niggas. <laughs> yeah, man. right. Brass <laughs> cats is a lyrical animal. I ain't gonna nigga. They they yeah you do nigga. His son can't fuck with him. Them youngsters, they gonna try to go dunk and John Moran on them, but he gonna do he gonna do like Shep on uh above the rim. That nigga just gonna step back and keep raining on their ass. He's a mother, he's a human encyclopedia. He know Fact. all the history and he know all the shit with the bars. You put that and mix, he gonna give you some history. That's why all them niggas be doing history and shit. They learned it from their pops. Period. Yeah. All, the, all the fucking spiritual and, and, and majestic history and shit. Yeah, they learn it from they probably you hear what they rapping about. Oh, the God, they, they talk about God and spiritual shit and rapping and bars. Books. <laughs> yeah, books and shit that, that come from pop. But they gassing, nigga. Salute to the youngsters and bringing bars back and bringing real fucking hip hop back, bro. Man. Man. Just, woo, let me land. It's like it's like the NBA right now. <laughs> I think niggas is lazy. I think why you don't see LeBron in the motherfucking uh, slam dunk contest because niggas is getting paid so much money. I ain't got to do it. Rappers is getting paid so much money just to do the music they doing, just to whatever they doing. They ain't got to really step the fucking the, the, the level up. Like Mac Dre said, man, turn it up. Like niggas ain't trying to turn it up. It, it can stay at what it is and keep going and they can make their money. Nobody trying to step the level up. These niggas right here, Costa Contra, is stepping the par game up, bringing it up. Like, nigga, fuck all that little bullshit y'all doing, copping each other, motherfucking auto tuning each other. Nah, nigga, bar, bar fest, nigga. What y'all got, Boy. nigga? Let's take it back, nigga. No jewels, no jury, nigga. Straight bars, nigga. What we doing, nigga? Fuck the jewels, nigga. Yada, yada, yada. They, they own it, nigga. They own it. And they make the normal, nigga, feel cool. Everybody ain't got Phantoms and Bentleys and shit and Jewels and all this shit. It's normal niggas out here, you know, and appreciate good music, man. So salute to Con uh, Coast of Contra, man. Them niggas is lit. Razz Cash, the sons is gas and shit. Yada da. No bullshit. No bullshit. I think, I think another nigga, though, is, is La Russell. You got to get La Russell. You got to get yeah. La Simba and your La Russell is, is murdering shit. Then, then my other two youngsters, that's that. Then my top, them three is my top three of West Coast, as far as the, 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 the leaders of the new school. The youngsters, the new academy, them three, that group and them two niggas is my vote for the new league of the West Coast. What y'all got? Won't get an argument out of me. I got the same thing. What y'all got? I, Am I missing I, somebody? Not hell no. I mean, not that list, that that top three. I, that pretty much said, it, man. Shout out to Russell, nigga. North Vallejo. Nigga, the Russell was busting they ass, man. No Frank Ocean, nigga. That nigga doing home fucking concerts in his backyard, selling hella merch. Direct the customer, nigga. He figured it out, nigga. And he just yeah. did a big ass. Somebody. I don't know who he did it with. If if, if 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 street knowledge was still alive, I would have threw him up in there, man, because I feel like he was on his way. Absolutely. I like I like the kid, Young Junior, too. Who's that? Um, Young Junior. He is. I think he's working with Filthy right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, Young. Oh, okay. Oh, boy, that was that was rapping on top of Booker's with the little dread. Yeah. Oh, that nigga. Yeah, he the shit. I fuck with him. I didn't know his name, nigga. That nigga lit. I rock with him. You right, young junior lit. Shout out FOD. I didn't know that nigga name. I always I'm like, that nigga filthy got a he got an art. That nigga is lit. I was saying that artist he got is the one. He young Junior. That nigga, he was rapping on top of Booker's. He got the little dreads and shit. He he go. I fuck with him, man. I got my ass to the street. That nigga lit. I just forgot the nigga name. Young Junior is lit. 
Hey, 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 Kelly, hey, Kelly, hey, Kelly, Kelly Cash got a son that's up and coming and ain't caked up will, man. That little nigga, that little nigga torching too, though, man. He only, right. you know what I mean? Keep, keep your eyes out. Ears out for that little nigga. That nigga right. torching. Yeah, that little nigga rough. Hell yeah, you rotted the motherfucker. Hey man, we gotta give it up to my bill, nigga. Though, man, uh, 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 Papa, man. We gotta, oh, yeah, we gotta give it up to Papa, man. You feel me? Hell yeah, condition alive, man. They keeping it alive. Shout out to all of the real lab rats that stay in that I, motherfucking I, studio, man. Sleep, eat, breathe in that motherfucker, man. This is what I would just say to the town, though. You know what I'm saying, like. We just we just gave a crash course history lesson on on just town art period. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know it's a new new age. Niggas got this stubby case and ENT thing popping off, man. Everybody in their little sectors, man. But I'm just telling you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, if niggas want want to see the town back popping as the town really is, man. You know what I mean? We got to understand, man. You know, these boys come to an end, my nigga. And when it comes to this rap game, my nigga, the town, we all we got. It don't, it don't matter. Like, I'm, I'm from that East Oakland versus West Oakland area, my nigga. You know, even still, you know what I mean? Like, that shit came to an end. Like, we got to put that shit to the side, man. Get to the bag, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, niggas had longevity in their careers. We was talking about the some of the hardest artists that we lost, my nigga. And now we're talking about upcoming artists coming up. You know what I mean? You niggas out there. And then look, we man, I'm thanks for the all of you. But y'all forgot about the hardest nigga coming out the bay right now, man. Larry June. Ooh, shout out Larry June. Why nobody said Larry June, nigga? Larry June is being a motherfucking ass right now, man. Larry June, boy. That nigga, hey, on that fly play shit. Yeah, he welcome. Yeah, I rock with him, nigga. I, yeah, I'm doing a long trip to Vegas, nigga. Larry June all the way there, nigga. Fly playing shit, nigga. For real. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Man. That's an honorable mention, like a motherfucker, man. Shout out Larry June, man. Larry June beating their ass, man. And on that note, man, we gonna get the fuck up out of here, man. We ain't been in this bitch damn near three hours, man. You know what I mean? Um, uh, rest, uh, rest in peace and pretty black, man. Regime uh, mob, man. Salute to y'all. Salute to everybody that tapped in in the chat, man. Salute to the mods and shit. You know what I mean? What the fuck weekly, man? This was a dope documentary, man. Even though it was, you know, it was a couple of false fumbles and shit, but I'm proud that somebody, you know what I mean, gave my nigga pretty black as flowers. You know what I mean? Pretty black was one of the ones. You know what I mean? He was a real one, nigga. You know what I mean? He was tall. I don't know about all that other dumb shit niggas was talking about. That nigga was a real boss, a fixture, a faction, a factor, whatever you want to call a nigga in the game. Nigga. He was that. You know what I mean? Young nigga, 20s, nigga. That nigga was saying, nigga, my rims is older than me, nigga. I'm 24, nigga. I'm sitting on 30s, nigga. That type of shit, man. You know what I mean? So, rest in peace to the mob. Rest in peace to pretty black, nigga. You know what I mean? Biggie Dragon Cane, nigga. Had a Dragon Cane, nigga. Think it in his belly, nigga. Like, come on, man. Rap this shit, man. One of the things he told me, nigga, he's like, nigga, you gonna be the motherfucking, uh, you motherfucking Cameron. I'm gonna be the Juice Santana of the crew. This when he was in the Range Rover, like, he just got in the mouth. Two years later, this nigga really did Joel Santana. Big ass Joel, like Joel Santana. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> He really was a Joel Santana the crew because Joel's that remember when Joel came out, he had more Joel's and camera. Like then they got the big ass A. He had the big ass A chain with the wings and shit. That Joel's was like heavy on the neck, nigga, heavy on the wrist. So he like, nigga, you can, I'm the Joel's. And nigga, two years later, nigga, pow, 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 pow. Extra heavy on the wrist. Nigga, cars, fan, nigga, oh, not fan of nigga. Nigga, Lambos, nigga, all type of shit. Okay, nigga, you all the Joel Santana of the Ray and Sheen mob, nigga. You got Tech Nine, Tech Nine, he got a lot of money. He ain't doing all that extra shit. I got money. I ain't doing the extra like he doing. Nigga, he is the Joel Santana. Then he just big ass size of a nigga belly. You are the Joel Santana of the squad. Nigga, hey, 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 yuck. Hey, Mr. Miller say he gonna honor him at the West Coast Hip Hop Awards coming up. Man, he has to, bro. Period. We gotta give bro his flowers, man. He was a moving and shaking, man. I don't think we were no burner if it wasn't for 
pretty black. There wasn't no motherfucking combining for one pretty black. You know what I mean? Period. I'm, I'm just saying, straight up, that they came up on the pretty. He put them in. He put them in the loop. I'm just saying. And you guys, any nigga that come from the mob and know us, that nigga put them niggas in the loop. And look where they at right now. I end this shit on that, man. Y'all have a good night, man. What the fuck, we, we unique? Hey, yeah, just a move, bro. I need that goddamn uh, uh I'll make it happen. We should call interview the next time she in LA. We in, you know, we out here. I I know she probably live out here somewhere. So the next time she free, because <laughs> I know she ain't in that treacherous ass Bay Area, nowhere out there. She probably in Atlanta, but if she ain't in Atlanta, she's definitely out here. If she out here. Have a tap in, sis. Come on, it's way overdue, man. Let's run this shit up. You dig? Yep. Make it happen. All right. Happy New Year, sis. Yada da. Happy New Year. Hey, hey, hey. One more thing. We're going to be at the motherfucking uh, New Paris uh, at the beginning of March. I think on the second or the third. Pull up. Off top. I think she got a show on the, uh, in March, too, but it's later, though, like the 22nd or something. Don't quote me on it. So, yeah. Hey, nigga, hey, pull up to our show. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I forgot where I was at. Okay. Same, same as pull up. We gonna have everybody out there in the universe. All right. Asian Cole good. is performing in March 20 what? <laughs> nah, we, we doing a new Paris right now. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I see the sound, sis. One mile. It's always a treat, Playboy, man. You feel me? Hey, man, another great show. What the fuck, motherfucking weekly. Shout out to Gooch, the motherfucking great, the unseen bully. You know what I mean? Shout out to motherfucking the town. Yuck mouth. Hey, baby, another one down. Another one down. Thanks for tapping in, my nigga. Yada da. Hey, man, another night, Dynamite. What the fuck, Wheatley, man, man. Re big rest in peace to Pretty Black, man. Real regime mobs, so, man. We got to throw them M's up for Pretty Black, my nigga. Um, great documentary. You know, a couple fumbles, but I love that people giving shout-outs to Pretty Black and really, you know, recognizing that he was a boss in the game, my nigga. Period, man. So we're going to salute him tonight, man. You know what I mean? And give a real mob salute, a real mob toast, man. And this ain't even a one of the twins, man. <laughs> You know, but uh, you gotta give a real mob salute to my nigga Pretty Black, man. Salute to my nigga Regime Mob, man. Dragon Game, bang, bang. Rest in peace, nigga. Yada. Don't, don't keep your name alive, my nigga. Period, man. Also, Gonzo, man. Rest in peace of Gonzo. Another Regime Mob nigga that died. You know, rest in peace of my nigga Gonz. Japori, J Stone, nigga, my cousin. Raging mob that rest in peace. Come on, man. So we lost some mobs since in the game, my nigga. We still representing this motherfucking dragon chain. Bang, bang. Love y'all, man. Salute and good night, Dynamite. Oh, before I go, man, I'm on my phone that. I want to salute to the people who did the cash apps. I definitely want to salute to y'all because y'all, you know, definitely uh, contributing to the machine. You know, a nigga need a new computer. Definitely, man. Oh, the fuck is my phone at? My bag, man. Next episode, I shout out the uh, cash apps. You know what I mean? Appreciate the cash app. God damn, the cash apps. A little tipsy, man. Uh, uh, Fumbalaya. <laughs> you dig? But I appreciate the cash apps, man. You definitely help the program, man. And, um, Don't think because a nigga got money, a nigga can't make money. You know what I mean? So it's millionaires with big podcasts. Yeah, you know, with they super chat, whatnot. These niggas got millions of dollars. So they're sponsored. They got deals and whatnot. I don't got a deal. This is all out of my pocket. You know what I mean? Everything I do. Smoke a lot of radio. What the fuck? Weekly. One the twins. All out of my pocket. Period. So whatever y'all donate is greatly fucking appreciate it period because we all on the grind man like when you start a business man if you ain't ready to just put your own money in for the first five years and not get no results don't be ready to do a business period so we grinding and we trying to shine too man so 
donate if you appreciate the conversation. You know what I mean? We ain't begging for nothing, man. But we let you know the situation, man. But it's great content y'all getting on this channel. It's for free 99. It's we ain't sponsored. It's no commercials. It's no none of that shit. Period. We sponsored by y'all. Period. So we're going to continue to give this great content and support it. That's all we ask. And y'all been supporting it. We, su we greatly appreciate it. So keep supporting this shit. We're going to keep going hard in the paint. We're going to put paint with motherfucking paint. You hear me? We're going to keep going hard. Fuck it. You know what I mean? No Frank Ocean. Another episode, What the Fuck Weekly. Uh, this week, um, on Smoke A Lot Radio, we got some big heavy hitters in the building, man. Snoopy Badass. Smoke A Lot Radio this Thursday. It's going down. Also, my nigga Prime is in the building, so we doubling up. Snoopy Badass and Prime. The following week, we got uh, Pimp and Ken coming in the building. So, yeah, Smoke A Lot Radio turning up. What the Fuck Weekly, we will be, I mean, uh, Wonder Twins, we will be back on Friday with some bullshit. You know, we were all the motherfucking bullshit. Shout out my twin, Goose the motherfucking great. You feel me? So, yeah, it's lined up, man. This shit is like television, nigga. <laughs> Get your motherfucking popcorn. We don't like shit, nigga. Smoke a lot radio, yuck mouth TV, motherfucking Wonder Twins. What the fuck? Weekly. Bye bye now. Tap in, nigga. Log in. Yada. -da. And then I said all that great shit. Hit the likes. Hit the motherfucking subscribe. Y'all wonder why niggas be in the chat like I missed it. I missed it. Why did I miss this? Hit the notification bell. We go when we want to go. We ain't got no schedule. We don't, we ain't we don't work for nobody but us. So we can go whenever the fuck we want to go. No Frank Ocean. So hit the notification bell. So when we get loose, no Frank Ocean, y'all tapped in. Y'all get a motherfucking splash across y'all motherfucking screen. Ah, boom, Wonder Twin. Ah, boom, Smoke a lot. Boom, this one. Hit the notification. So when we do rock. Or just hit the subscribe. Subscribe or no notification. One of the motherfuckers gonna make y'all get a notification that we going. Period. That motherfucking yuck mouth TV is lit. Period. You get that boom across your screen. Ah, hit that bitch. You live and direct. Stop saying you missed the live without hitting the motherfucking notification bell. Period. On that note, we out this bitch. Good night, dynamite.